Hello and welcome. <laughs> ah. That's disgusting. So hi rollers. The Mark's drinking and piss. I'm drinking I'm drinking a beer. Uh, it's that kind of How weekend. How dare you. Piss butter. Um, yeah, don't tell Terps. Uh, hello, welcome to High Rollers, the Dungeons and Dragons stream here on the Yogscast Twitch. Thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully there's some new people in, in view today, no. as well as you old lovely fans. All of you. Yes, you. Me and you. Uh, joining me, we have the usual crew, Chris Trot. Katie Morrison is back from Scotland. Hi. Do you have a nice time? Yeah, except I got delayed three hours on the way home. Let's focus on the good things though. Scotland's lovely, yeah. seeing the fam. More yeah. importantly, did you see Trot's impression of Alora? No. Okay. I got good. several tweets though that said I died, so thanks. It's not true. Don't need to worry about Let's the impressions. Let's do it! <laughs> Tom yeah. Hazel, Hello. brand new streamer, big <laughs> latest upcoming thing on Twitch. Oh, what's, that, what's that Twitch there? Amadeus Fink? It's Amadeus Fink. Amadeus. <laughs> if you want to watch it's a really that. unprofessional, unprepared stream, Twitch.tv forward slash Tabletop Weekly. No. And then you can swap over to Amadeus oh. Fink. Oh. Yes. <laughs> We'll see how that plays out in today's game. What? Kim Richards, Yo. the fourth and final star of this. Star. Yeah, we well, are all stars. Star. You're all stars. We are stardust. <laughs> oh yeah. It's made of star stuff. Anyway, what? so <laughs> welcome to High Rollers. I'm glad you could join us. Thank you very much. Announcements. I'm going to hand this over to Katie because I'm completely lost on a we lot of things. We made a mess of it last week. I'm terrible. For God's sake. <laughs> so, Katie, take us away. Big thing is that we are going to be at Somnia 62 which is from the 30th until the 2nd of April. Where? So on the, on the 31st, which is the Saturday evening. When? At the Birmingham NEC. So the 31st, Saturday. Why? The, <laughs> shut up. Saturday the 31st, How? we're going to be doing a live show, which starts at 7 p.m. And it's what? going on for two whole hours. So Whoa. we're going to be doing a two hour live show. Tickets are £10. There is a link in our pinned tweet on our profile. So at High Rollers d, d on Twitter, you'll find a link to tickets for that. If you want to also meet us, you will need a day ticket for Insomnia. So that will be found at insomniagamingfestival.com because we will be there through the day on Saturday, but you'll need both in order to see us. If you want to just come to the show, you can just buy a ticket to the show. So do that Things because it'll be the show. amazing. It's, we are going to be playing a live D&D game. There's going to be cool what? props. I've got a throne. I've asked for a, an enormous dragon. Yeah, the, the dragon apparently can't happen anymore. But Damn it! <laughs> oh, I've got a small but paper mache dragon. It's not the same. We should this take is we'll huge. But we're going to take, we'll take him anyway. We'll take um, but the thing is, th another clarification. This is a one-shot mm -hmm. show. So while we are still playing these characters, it is still a one shot. So if there's someone that you want to bring along to the show who's never seen any of our stuff before, it it's still gonna be it's gonna be in this world, but it is gonna be a one shot. And there's also a lot of people concerned that it was gonna be the end of the campaign. That is not, not the case. No. It is we would never wrap up the campaign at a show that not everyone exactly. can see. It will so. be somewhat tied into it. There will be some similar stuff going on. Um, but it's going to be the last chance to see these characters, probably, because we'll probably be starting the new campaign around then, or if not, already would have had started yeah. done. So basically, it's, it's your last chance to see us live playing these characters. So please do come along if you can. It would be amazing to have your support. Um, another thing is that these dice, these ones, these Dead Reckoning ones have sold out now. Unfortunately, they won't be restocked. Ha! There are still... You didn't get any. There are still... Um, there's under a hundred left of our original silver High Rollers Ooh, dice, and that is all that there's going to be. We're so not going to make any more of those original yeah, ones. When Ever. the original ones are sold out, they're gone, we're going to be doing something different. So if you do want to get your hands on the original High Rollers dice set, then grab them now. But there Katie, is also what if people also want posters? And Question mark! There is currently um, uh, half off posters on the Oxcast store. So posters that what? are usually That's 10 pounds are now saving. 5 pounds. Wow. So if you want to grab a poster at half price and a limited edition, now limited, dice set, then yes. grab them now. And um, also... And also t-shirts. Mugs. New shirt. And mugs and things like that. But and yeah, just come. wanted to make you guys aware that these are the last of the dice, so don't miss out on them. And the posters will be... Le well, whatever's left of the posters anyway, they're down to five pounds at the moment, so go get them! But also keep an eye on our Twitter next week because we may have some exciting yeah. other things in the works. I think that's it for announcements. <clears throat> I'm done. Wow. Well, well, Absorb that information. That doesn't look like a dragon. I'll let Trot talk about this because it's not even mine. He's letting me use it. I spent too much money on that. 
waiting. I mean, they can't <laughs> even really see it that well either. So oh, okay. this is a well, Wormwood Gaming to... DM screen. The it will look ball. fancy. It looks really nice. Not yeah. sponsored. It's not sponsored. <laughs> oh, good, it's gone. <laughs> good. The annoying dice is gone. So let's crack on with the game. Oh. Recap time. The party are currently in a city called Greybell. Uh, it was actually one of the starting points for several of, several of our adventurers, uh, Elora Juto and Cam Buckland. And it is a place in which oh. Cam Buckland has a very specific background history, some history in Greybell related to the Buckland family. The party have come here because Cam Buckland received a vision from his goddess Avandra who basically told him that there was a dark power growing, that all of the other issues, all the other problems that they have looming on the horizon really do pale in comparison to what's building up in Greybell and it needs to be dealt with. So she sent Cam to deal with this matter because it was related particularly to his backstory, a man called Karen Blackhearth, who the party now know for sure is a vampire, a master vampire. The party infiltrated into the city, found it pretty much deserted. The only thing they found were scores and scores of dead littering the streets. They have explored a little. Sorry. That was quite loud. Uh, they have explored a little and found um, not necessarily pockets of resistance, but they have found that there is something going on in the city. There are gargoyles which are spying on them. The birds and animals all seem to be under Karen's sway and are acting as scouts. Uh, plant life has died. Sunlight isn't quite as strong. Um, the sun sets far too early and sun rises far too late. Um, and it, there's basically some bad stuff happening. They're aware of a creature called the Dirge Singer, who appears to be singing a deathly choir song which rises the dead at night. Oh. Um, the party have freed two figures from a nearby region called the Unbroken Empire. Um, a woman called Libram and a man called Testament who have been assisting them. They have now been equipped. Uh, Elora vanished from a recent battle uh, fighting some undead creatures after the party slew some vampires. They killed some vampire spawn, um, trying to get some information out of them. Um, and then the rest of the party descended into sewers which run underneath the sewer. Uh, descended into the madness. City to try and reach the center. I believe you were trying to reach the center of Greybell. You were heading towards the clock tower uh, where the Dirge Singer's well, song. We were looking no, for Laura. Yeah, and I think we were gonna use the sewers to get to the, the center. center. Yes. But first find Laura. You had tried to find Laura, but you'd found no trace of her. Because, she basically yeah, vanished. There was... She passed without a trace. Yeah. You, you believe so. That's what we think. That's what you think. So. Yeah. Although no, we did hear voices when we were in the sewers as we well. We did. You heard murmuring, but it was like group murmurings. We head towards it and then we went back to where Laura first was, where and we thought, couldn't find, her. Yep. couldn't find her. I started drawing a line as we walked towards the clock I tower. I believe the last thing you said you were doing was heading towards to the, the, the center of the city in the clock tower. Yes. yes. Well, we're going to jump with Laura now oh. to start with. She's not dead. Where am I? So, dead. what happened to you was in Earth Elemental form, you had fought off several large undead creatures. Did I beat um, the shit out of them? You did. Good. And in fact, you were the one to take down the last one that was kind of still threatening the party. Um, after you did that, the rest of the party had moved to the other side of the building, this manor house that they'd been fighting across because they discovered something and left you to kind of finish off these undead brutes. You attempted to burrow using your earth elemental powers. You went underneath the, the manor house, but that is where you encountered something strange. You passed into a group of sewers continued burrowing, but then you fell into a large cavity, which actually dropped the earth elemental down onto the ground. The fall damage combined with the damage you'd taken in both previous battles, knocked you out of your elemental <coughs> form. And you now currently basically find yourself in what appears to be some sort of catacombs, long tunnels of ancient looking flagstone, older than the light fall itself, with rows and rows of kind of sealed sarcophagi built into the walls themselves. Um, stone, uh, sorry, metal iron brackets hold ancient looking torches, but the whole thing is pitch black. You're gonna need some sort of light source to see. More darker than elf vision? Yeah, uh, yeah the, in, in homebrew, you don't have dark vision, you only have low light vision. Oh, yeah. So. Um, I will then question. Yes. If I was to use my ring and go invisible, yes. would my light source become visible only to me, or would it? Because it's part of. <laughs> it would technically Blast. your equipment merges with you. Because it was my bow. But the residual light outside of you right. wouldn't be invisible, so it'd be like this walking Aura. source of light. Yeah, yeah basically. Okay. I'll just uh, light my moon bow. Then. Okay, so you pull out the moon bow, and that sets out this soft, silvery light. 
Um, and yeah, you can basically see you're in this kind of long corridor with rows and rows of sarcophagi. Looking around you, you think that the people buried here, it's not particularly expensive. They don't look royal or anything like that. Um, this looks like basically like no, there's no cemetery in Greybell. This is probably where they used to bury their dead. Does anything look, do the sarcophagi look like they've been disturbed? No. It, in fact, most of this place looks completely pristine and well preserved. Because your earth elemental form literally fell through the cavity because it doesn't disturb the rock it passed through, you just basically fell through into a perfectly preserved catacombs at this point. One thing, give me your past perception is really high, right? 19. 19. You can see really far down this dark corridor, way out of range of your, your low light of this moon bow, this kind of glowing soft blue emanation that kind of projects out of the bow itself. You can see what you think must be the end of a corridor and a very faint blue light, which maybe is coming from underneath the door, you suspect, or maybe some sort of sealed passageway, but just this very faint okay. blue light. And it basically, this corridor seems to stretch on. Um, and looking to the side, you can see that there are turnings every now and then, but some of them appear to just go into long rooms or small tombs, maybe mm -hmm. for people that were once quite rich, but not rich enough to afford like a full burial chamber or anything like that. Um, some of them have been collapsed, like rocks have broken down and you can smell what is almost like raw sewage kind of dripping down through these kind of broken sections. Um, but at the end of the hall, you can just see this kind of large stone doorway. How far away is that? I mean, it's probably like 150 feet. Like okay. you're, this is with your super keen yeah. elven sight. You're just seeing this faint blue line. Hmm. I'll start moving towards it mm -hmm. carefully, but can I just have a look down the other passages as yeah, I go sure. to make sure I, mm -hmm. as my light passes through that I don't see anything You're kind of like anything checking else. for stuff that's moving and things yeah. like that. Okay, um, so uh, give me an active passive perception and an active stealth. Natural 20. Okay, damn, perfect. Um, that's not good. Uh, five. Okay, so you're moving down and you're kind of maneuvering the bow every now and again and you, it's kind of got a glowing arrow already in your hand which is kind of giving off the soft light so this kind of you hear this kind of faint from the bow as it's kind of you're moving the thing around with the natural 20 perception looking around you don't think anybody's been down here in years this place looks like the the level of dust there's a few cobwebs and things like that you don't think that anybody's been down here even remotely recently and there's no, you can't hear any song, you can't hear anything like, you know, what you heard the dirge singer the night previously. Moving around, yeah, like you're getting the sense that actually down here, it feels very different to, to Greybell. Uh, almost like something is kind of cutting it off from the rest of Greybell. Um, mm -hmm. And looking around, you don't see any movement, you don't see any undead shuffling around or anything like that. It's almost this very quiet, still peacefulness. Um, but as you get closer and closer, the blue light coming from underneath the thing, it kind of pulses as if something is illuminated and moving in the room beyond. Um, and as you get closer to the door, you see that it's a heavy stone door engraved with depictions of a noble, kind of almost Saxon looking human line, kind of developing further. Like they start off almost quite like Saxon-like, they grow more refined in their sort of appearance, their armor, their costume. Um, and engraved above it is the name Blackhearth, and then underneath it, in kind of ye olde common, is from ruined land did they grow a prosperous home. Um, and it seems that this is like some sort of sealed tomb. Perhaps like the, the tomb. family tomb. Yeah, you suspect that it's probably the Black Hearth family tomb. What was it from? Uh, from ruined land okay. did they grow a prosperous home. Okay. And there's one figure that it looks like? Uh, there's, it's actually like, almost like a line, like a line of succession. And there's actually room, like going across the door, it starts with somebody who looks like an ancient king, kind of progresses, progresses, they become more lord-like, um, the armor changes. And it looks like on the second half of the door, there's room for more engravings to be made. Okay, but within, uh, there was a shadow moving inside. Yeah, now that you're closer, you can see this kind of almost like a, a blue glow and it, it kind of grows dim, and then it comes bright, and then it goes dim, like then it becomes bright. Like something patrolling? glowing is moving around in the room beyond. Okay, can I see if there's any traps on this door? Sure, yeah, investigate, investigation. Uh, 10. 10, checking around, you don't get any sense for traps or anything like that. It looks very heavy. 
if you weren't wearing the magical belt, which gives you incredible strength, this would probably take two or three men to open. Um, but you reckon you can probably push it open uh, if you needed to. It opens inwards. Okay, is, it, is the thing inside making any noise? No, all? no noise. Nothing at all. No noise whatsoever. And it's a blue glow. Mm -hmm. Would I know arcade, like my bow is giving off a sort of a radiant blue light. Would I know what kind of a... If you want to do anything, I would say Arca Arcana check for any more information that you as Katie know. Magic gives off light. You've seen spell casts, like Cam can mm -hmm. create light from his spells. You can obviously create light with your spells. Um, you've seen in first light things like continual flame torches, which can give off light but make no sound. Um, there are magical sources of light. With a 12, there's also creatures. Um, you've encountered several of them, some occasionally. Uh, Will-o'-the-wisps, ghosts, spectres, mm -hmm. um, Arcane, like things like pseudo dragons, can also technically give off a sort of light as well. Um, it could be a load of different things. That's the problem. Can I use my ring to go invisible mm -hmm. and douse just, my light? Yeah, you focus that. It push. goes completely black, and you just push feel out for the door in front of you, and you push it open, and you hear this heavy kind of like you kind of have to strain for the first time in so long. With, you know, with this newfound strength from the belt, you kind of and these doors kind of open. Um, and you kind of crouch low in the kind of hoping that this invisibility, the shroud of, of stealth will provide you. And you look out onto a room, which is set, stretches back maybe 70 feet. And there are sarcophagi um, engraved with these royal looking men and women um, upon them. Very rich looking, made from a high quality stone. And you can see that there are things like like ancient looking urns left at some of them, sometimes like gold coins stacked around or like a beautiful necklace, like various treasures kind of inlaid at the foot of each sarcophagus. Um, and as you step forward, you can see the site, the source of this blue glow is a man wearing quite fashionable, like a long tail coat, not tail coat, like surcoat, like a long sort of like tailored robe with trim, um, almost like a breastplate armor. Uh, he wears a thin crown of just like a black metal with a single gemstone, but he is a ghost. Um, and you can see his, his features are heavily sunken like he was ill uh, or perhaps looks quite sickly. And he kind of paces occasionally like looking up and just shaking his head. Um, you can see he has a scabbard on his waist, but there's no weapon there. Um, and he just kind of paces and just moves around the room. In Does a he look of... quite calm? Yes, very calm, yeah. almost mournful, sorrowful. Okay. Hello? He kind of looks over. Who is there? Um. Who are you? He then, you can see he looks at you. Even with the I invisibility, he you sees know. you. Who are you? Why have you come here? To try and fix what's going on. Uh, when you say that, he looks quite relieved. Um, and his face softens and he bows his head and he kind of, what is your name? Laura Galanadel. I am Dalstan Blackearth, father of Karen Blackearth. Have you come to end the nightmare that my son has begun? Yes, we're hoping to. I he have some companions in the city too. He nods, and perhaps my prayers have finally been heard. What do you know of my son, Elf of Galanadel? Very little, currently. <coughs> There's vampirism here, and that <laughs> he he seems to be a bit power hungry, but I've personally never met him. The dark powers gave my son the gift of the curse of vampirism, but I'm afraid that I made him a monster long before then. My son was an attractive, popular boy, but he was greedy, lustful for power, and in him he hid a dark rage. But he was my only heir, and I indulged him greatly. When he attacked the other boys, I paid their fathers to stop them from taking retribution. I did not scold him. When he asked for a, some, a thing, a trinket, a girl, uh, anything, a prize, I gave it to him. I spoiled him as best I could. And in that was my folly. 
Uh, I'm going to cut back to the three of you guys. So, uh, Juto, oh. Cam, <clears throat> Reynard, you guys are currently uh, in the sewers. You're, you're making your way through these kind of broken ancient sewers of Greybell. The stench is repulsive. It is all around you at all times. It's almost overpowering at some points where you have to almost stop. Reynard is barely like preventing mm -hmm. himself from being sick all mm -hmm. the time. He's still got the garlic and yeah, he but does, I but still keep it over my mouth. It's 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 barely keeping him from like retching, like just mm. trying to. He's like huffing deeply in this garlic. <laughs> uh, just huffing garlic. He is also the one who's currently leading you. Reynard, despite his kind mm -hmm. of condition, seems to be able to like when you reach a junction, he kind of thinks. Now Reynard. Yes. Are you trying to take the most direct route to the clock tower, or are you trying to... What are you trying to do? Do you just want to get there as quickly as possible? Huh? I thought we were looking for a Laura. Well, the last thing you said was you were heading towards the centre of the city. I yeah. think, we I think what yeah, we, we said was that we'd expect the Laura to meet us in yeah. the centre. That was the, that was so. the last thing that was agreed. We were looking for on the way, but we're heading towards the clock tower. I think what I would do is, maybe not the most direct route, but maybe looking around certain paths to see what would potentially be the safest route okay. or areas that might be or could be heavily populated okay. if there is anything down here. So with that what I would like you to do is um, every sort of hour or so you'll need to make a survival check to okay. kind of kind of get a suss of the area. You know this isn't an area familiar with but your natural ranger training kind of lets you kind of smell the air disgusting as it may be try and figure out which way is the less yep. repugnant. Still can, shit. Um, can we help? Uh, if you want to try, if you are proficient in survival, yep. you can help. Okay, so if you're proficient in survival, because I think Juto as well would like to kind of help. Oh, you are. Reynard. Okay, <laughs> so you guys can make a check as well. I'm just going to aid his. Okay, so you can make it with advantage. You can make your survival check Good. with advantage. What oh, I will say to aid him mm -hmm. is when we come to a split, I say, Reynard, you can either go that way or that way. <laughs> There's two options. Thank you, uh, Twenty-four. 24 for you. 18. Okay. No, 17. 17. 17. Um, so I'll give you a bonus because of it looked, Juto was helping and got such a high roll. So with Juto's help, you um, you make your way. And the sewers themselves, they're maybe sort of like... So sometimes they're quite wide. They're like 40 feet wide. And there is a thick channel with a kind of platforms on either side mm. with kind of a curved... Not low, but not very tall. Like the tallest amongst you are probably kind of crouching a little bit. Um, but sometimes they get extremely narrow and you're actually through sense of potential danger and speed you're trying to avoid those incredibly narrow points yeah. um, that block through. Um, with Juto's help you manage to determine sort of a safe passage around and still keep in the rough direction. You can't get lost but you're trying to keep on the right track. Yeah. Um, Libra and Testament are following and they seem very much out of their element. They're kind of like looking around. You can see that they're taking more of the role of guards. Like they're, you know, Libram has got this hefty sort of like blacksmith's hammer and a shield and she's kind of keeping a wary eye. Testament is actually put away the greatsword and he now has two hand axes out. And he's actually kind of like, he'll get to a corner, like check down it and stuff like that first. Um, and as you make your way around, you come across, you kind of enter a large open area and you can see ahead what appears to be two tents that have been pitched down here. The smell isn't quite as bad. Um, the filth has kind of receded a little bit, almost like it's drained away, almost oh, like yeah. it's not reached into this area. Um, and you can see these two tents, what looks to be like almost like the makings of a campfire, um, a small spit placed over it. Uh, you can see some belongings like bags and things like that have been tossed around as well. Reynard sees that first, right? Reynard sees that first as well with Juto. Okay. Um, does it look check. recent or...? Uh, you can make me an. Uh, if you want, are you trying to look from a distance, or you want to go up and inspect it? Look from a distance at first. Okay, perception to check. See if I can see anyone around, or mm -hmm. like if it's a recent mm. thing. Ten. Ten. Okay. So looking from a distance, I mean, it's kind of dark and shadowy down here. You've only got like a little bit of light from like uh, Reynard's flashlight, um, Cam's bandana, and things like that. So the dim light is kind of hindering it. You can see the shapes of the tents. You can kind of see. Um, the the shape of like this cooking spit. There's no embers in the campfire. Like it mm. doesn't look like it's been lit in days. You know, it's all dead and, and cold and wet and stuff like that. Um, like I said, the smell of the sewers is lesser here. Um, but there's there is still that kind of smell of rot and decay, which is kind of being permeated through. But it, it does smell a bit stronger. That kind of sweet 
rot of flesh. Mm. Someone's died here. Um, can I, again from the distance, can I look to see what sort of things, what sort of belongings they have? Like mm-hmm. if it's weapons and things like that. Sure. Can tell us yeah, something. perception check. Uh, perception. You're going to be slightly at disadvantage because you don't have low light vision like tar- tieflings do. Good point. Shall I roll for disadvantage? Yeah, disadvantage please. Oh, so no. you roll twice, take the lower. Oh, one lower. Yeah. Uh, 14. 14. So actually, looking a bit closer, um, you kind of squint your eyes a little bit and you kind of flash the, the, the weird magical torch that you kind of have. Um, you kind of shine it around. And you can see the belongings themselves appear to be things like clothes, um, traveler's equipment, rations. You can see that there's some white uh, water skins that have been stacked up as well, like rations and things like that. Okay. Um, and then you see what appears to be legs sticking out from one of the tent. Like looking at it, you can see a pair of booted legs uh-huh. sticking out of the tent. Moving? No. Or at least even still. slightly shuffling? No, nope. still. Uh, I'll whisper to these guys and say, uh, there's no weapons there. It seems like travelers, it no seems like where? people uh, in the tents over there. Well, there's tents. Oh, yeah. Tents. There's tents, and there's potentially someone there. Libram turns around. It's just like, could it be people from the city that have tried to hide down here from the undead? Well, looking at their belongings, it could be people that have escaped into the sewers. So, it could be sick or needing help. Their fire has not been lit in some time. Mm. And there is someone there. Maybe the worst has happened already. You go. <laughs> How dark is it? Is it still um, pitch black? Like it's, no, you've got dim light from your light, own light sources. So you have kind of bright light in a 10 foot radius and then about buttons. 20 feet of yeah. dim light. Oh yeah, I've got my buttons as well. Yeah. So around you it's quite bright, um, but <laughs> it's hard to see further light. down. Okay. Like you're kind of almost have like light blindness from your own clothes. You're kind of having to do like this to like oh, really? okay. and stuff. Well, I'm going to really, really slowly shuffle. So every step is like, I'm seeing if there's something else appears. Something else appears. Okay. I'm looking around a lot. Really Testament slowly. will kind of like not follow you, but he kind of gets one of his hand axes raised up, like Wait. he's going to throw it. Like Wait. he's readying himself. Wait, I've got an idea. Okay, come back. <laughs> Look, all we do, right, is get a little stone and throw it at the tent. <laughs> See if it reacts in like a zombie kind of way or like a. Mr. Buckland, I don't think the issue is whether they're. Well, they could be undead in such as that. Yeah. They are likely dead. I would like to know what happened to them. If there is a danger down here, if they've been killed. While they're by talking, something. I'm just going to throw a stone. <laughs> like, kind of skips along and thuds. There's no reaction. I think they might be dead. <laughs> I think they may be. They maybe did what? Huh? They maybe did. <laughs> they maybe did. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. What did they maybe do? <laughs> they maybe did died. You can, oh. Don't forget, you don't have to actually whisper. <laughs> oh, yeah. You just kind of do a stage whisper. They maybe died. Well, in that case, let's go down. <laughs> yes, whispering. Okay, so you want to advance on the, yeah, the again, stuff? Yeah, okay. again, I'm first, I'm going really slow. Out of all of, out of the three of you, who's got the higher passive perception? Not me. 16. 16. 14. 14, so Reynard's got the highest one. Okay. okay. Um, you've got the same as Testament, to be fair. Uh, so. You guys approach and you see that there are two human figures laying in the tent. Um, they look like there may be a couple. One has an arm wrapped around the other. As Reynard gets closer, you will kind of have that moment of horror as you look and you can see that the bodies have basically been partially eaten. Um, oh. You can see bite marks like flesh has been torn away. Eyes have been removed from sockets and pulled out. Blood's kind of like splattered everywhere. Um, but they're still in a quite peaceful pose. You're not sure the order of what, how things happen. Reynard, are they dead? <laughs> Reynard, uh, partially eaten. You can see the other details you notice are they do have things like wineskins, food, um, untouched, um, okay. sealed in bags and chests. Oh. Uh, the woman has a necklace, like a thin leather necklace, with a silver. It looks like it's two bells, but it's been like almost like a, a paired locket. Um, and she has one half, and the other one is missing. Oh, so he doesn't have. The... He doesn't have the other one, no. Oh. Um, um, the other thing see. you and Testament notice <laughs> is watching you from a little bit further down, in sort of like a T junction, yeah. is a large rat. It's about the size of a cat, 
and its eyes are almost glowing red. Like, you, you look at them and you don't think they're glowing, but you could have sworn they were, and it's just watching you. Oh, it's reporting back. Right on. Um, can I make some kind of check to see if they died and then Rat Boy ate their face? Yeah, that'd be a medicine check. Can. Yeah. Uh, they're not going to attack us. 18. They're beyond dead. You suspect they died, probably from some sort of sickness maybe, or a, you don't really know what killed them. I mean, looking at it, there's no, like, they weren't didn't have, like, throat slit or anything like that. There's no physical injuries. What killed them must have been internal or maybe sort of like some sort of magical effect killed them. And then, yeah, they were basically eaten by rats. I relay this to the group. Oh, great. Now I'm going to start stomping up to you guys. Confident there's no problem. No, wait, wait, wait. Also... <laughs> come, come, come. I'll put a hand in front of him. Uh, and as quiet as I can, yes, I'm just gonna sort of like turn face so that my back is to the rat, uh -huh. and then do this. You're gonna this. load the crossbow. Well, not load the crossbow. I'm gonna like point at my, I guess, at myself, but I'm meaning behind me. <laughs> okay, so you're like you're like this. There's a there's a rat and it's watching us. There's a what? There's a rat and it's watching us. You, you're gonna have to speak up. There's, there's a rat. There's a rat. <laughs> Cam, do you not hear that? Hear yeah, what? Rats. Oh! It like, scrabbles a little bit. It's just a rat. It, just, us. it moves along to get, like, it moves a little bit along and then just Where? sits. Can I see it? Yeah, it's like, this, it's a, it's it's like right the size of, of a cat. It's, it's right, right, right in front of you. Yes. It's maybe like 40 feet down the corridor. It's on the other side of like this channel of waste in the middle of the sewer, and it's just looking at you. Oh. <laughs> Before you do anything, can I? Go just kill it. No, no, it, well, maybe. It, it, it's probably like the crows and the gargoyles outside. Then even more they don't reason, fly. even more reason we should kill it. This is testament. Yeah. How good's your aim? Pretty good. If we had Laura, she could fire a bow at it. If I mean, only I'm, we knew I'm someone quite... with a bow. Oh yeah. It's a crossbow. You're right. Yeah. It's got a wood bow in it. So we can, okay, we kill it then. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot at it. Okay, so you and Testament are gonna basically he's gonna throw an axe as you shoot, so make an attack roll, range attack. Oh hunter's market too. Oh. Ooh! <laughs> okay. I've got a better idea. Has he already attacked? Huh? Has he already attacked? Yeah, he's throwing the axe. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> I could have hunt as marked it and then let it run off. And then I could have tracked where it goes. Well, it doesn't, it wasn't gonna move. <laughs> it's just sat there looking uh, at you. Fine, I'll kill him. That's For the couple. That's 26. 26 hits, <laughs> yes, you hit the tiny rat. A couple. This well, it's not a tiny rat, it's a giant rat. It's a giant rat. It's a giant rat. Maybe it's a warrior. Yeah, but I'm doing Constant. this much damage. Uh, eight, two, another eight. I'll do 16 damage. Okay, to it. so what happens? Damage. The throwing axe okay. chops off like one of its legs, and it looks like it's like, and it like goes to scamper away, and then this crossbow bolt just impales it to the stone next to it, Ooh. and it just, you just hear this wet sound as it splatters across. Oh. Um, Wonderful. Elora, Hi. you back down with you in the catacombs. Um, Dalstan, this ghost, kind of floats over and he floats towards what you can see is a sarcophagi which matches his features um and he turns to you he's just i grew quite sick and weary in my final days my son made no effort to heal me he saw this as his chance to gain what he had always wanted i died my spirit could not pass on knowing what i'd helped create I watched him for some time. He was an expert with the blade, a knowledgeable, smart boy who loved to learn of magic. And he began researching dark things. Hmm. He found a book in our library, a book from before the Lightfall, that spoke of something called the Dark Powers and of a man called Strahd. Do you... Do you know if there's anything that he is weak to since you've been watching him? He abhors the sun, the light, the power of the gods he fears, but this dirge singer, this creature that the dark powers have given him, it helps protect him against such damage. Not only that, but this creature, this dirge singer, she is a fallen angel. As she sings, every night that she sings, his influence and the dark power's influence grows. 
When at first she arrived, it encircled only Greybell, but now it stretches out miles beyond. Each night, it grows more powerful. My son was greedy and angry, but it became worse when Morella Buckland entered his life. He was obsessed with her. He coveted her more than anything I have ever seen him covet before. He spoke of her beauty, of her skill. He saw her as a prize. And when he could not have her, his mind broke. He beseeched the dark powers one last time. He demanded, begged, pleaded for the power to live forever, to find a way to return her to life, to make her his forever. Did he kill her? In a rage. He intended to kill a young man, one of their performers. I do not know his name. He did not speak it. I know it. In a rage, he attempted to kill the man, but Morella, protecting her friend or her lover, I am not sure, she thrust herself in the way of the blade, and Karen killed her with his own hand. Of course, he blames the Buckland boy. It drove him to the point of insanity that he beseeched and sold his soul to this man called Strahd. If this man, this Buckland performer? Yes. If he was to see him again? I believe that Karen would stop at nothing to not just kill this man, but to make him suffer for all damnation. So what we're saying is it's all Cam's fault. <laughs> You could take that interpretation, <laughs> if you want. Cam Buckland is in the city. He's kind of... Is this the boy? Yes. I've been travelling with him for a few months now. He's... We've both been kept... There are things going on outside of the city that we are trying to stop, but this was too great a threat to allow to continue. And Indeed. Cam's involvement... The death that the dirge singer brings is slow. Perhaps it grows less than a mile each day that she sings. But every time, the sphere of influence of the dark powers grows. And if it grows too strong, there will never be a sunrise on Iraq again. There will be no more sunrises in Greybell or Talisval or anywhere. This dirge singer, how do we kill them? She is a being. She can be killed. She is undead like myself, like my son. But she can be destroyed. But that will not kill Karen. He no. must be destroyed as well. I think that's the first step. Lady Galanadel, I do not know you, but I beg you, end this nightmare. I cannot rest until my son is destroyed once and for all. And although it will end the Black Earth line, a line that has protected this land for centuries, millennia perhaps, it must be. I cannot offer you anything more than what I give you. But this city, this town, its riches, I will give them to you and any you travel with if you end this madness. All I hope is that from this that the Buckland line continues. I'm sorry, but my duty is to protect my friend. He nods. I wish that I had had the sense to protect others rather than just my family. Thank you. Families do that, but the fact that you know that this has to end shows that you are a better person than him. I wanted him to be a good boy. He showed such promise. You must be very careful with Karen. He was an expert swordsman when he was alive, and these powers that this Strahd has given him are unnatural, magic that he did not know before. He also wields my ancestral blade, the Black Hearth Blade. It is magical itself and grants him incredible speed. Oh, good. <laughs> Any weaknesses? That's, that's great. He's told you what no. he's tiny. I'm not the only other thing he would say is, along with the sun, he abhors running water. Water will hurt Running him. water. Yes. Yes, indeed. Far better than this walking water. Do we have to scare him? Well, <laughs> as in, like, you can't put him in a bucket of water. <laughs> like, you know, Lost it has up. to be a river. Put him something. in a bucket and run with it. Um, <laughs> um, stop ruining this moment. <laughs> 
Does he have a sarcophagus now in this room? His tomb was not built. Mine was prepared for me <clears throat> when I was younger, but I did not prepare his. I know no. where he rests. Where he has constructed it? a room at the top of the clock tower, beneath where the dirge singer sings. He keeps Morella's body there, in a crystal coffin that preserves her. Hmm. He seeks to perhaps find a way to return her to life, and then make her like him. He wants to turn her into a vampire. Indeed. There is no normal way into this room. Karen has the ability to turn into a mist. He travels in through small holes he has had drilled. But there is a window that looks out upon the city. You could perhaps reach it from there. Thank you for your help. Do not travel to my manor, to Blackhearth Manor. Many of Karen's spawn reside there now. Many of the Bucklands do as well. He keeps them as slaves. They're still alive? Some. Some he has turned into undead creatures. Some he has turned into spawn like himself. Karen seeks to create a society, culture that lives forever. He sees himself as better than the common folk, and he wishes to create a society of better people that will live forever. Wow. There is one amongst the Bucklands, a woman, the eldest. She currently protects the rest of them. She is wise beyond her years. Perhaps she could look after Greybell when I am gone. I'm sure that we can find someone to take care of Greybell. But you it will not return. be with Karen in it. Oh, of course. I do not expect it to be. From my understanding, there is no cure for this curse that he has been given. Not one that anything but a god could provide anyway. I can show you back to the surface. You will have to travel through the sewers that live above these catacombs. My friends have been traveling through the sewers. If you can find a way to get me back to them. Come with me. And his form sort of like lifts into the air and he begins floating back the way you came. Um, and yeah, he mission. starts leading you to a, a new place. Right, back to the three of you up in the sewers. I think so my, the rat is dead. I think splattered. my bolt has exploded as well. You hear a thunderous okay. echo yeah. run through. That's Wait, good. I think Whoa. I found them. <laughs> uh, it's a bit excessive for a rat, do you think, Reynard? Sorry. <clears throat> um, can I... Testament hops over the like, little channel, picks up his hand axe. Go on. Can I check the locket on Zivuman? It appears to be maybe like a like something that like a, a minor merchant, like a piece of jewellery that they might have. And yeah, it looks like it's basically um, a set of bells with a ribbon and it's literally like a paired necklace, like you can c link them together. So it's not thing. one that's like got a little picture in it. It's, it doesn't have a picture okay. there. It's just like two halves of a bell. And can well, I two search bells. like the, I don't know, the tent and stuff to see if the other one's... Yeah, I mean, no, you don't find this other necklace. You find things like food, water, um, you find some bundles of cloth, traveler's cloaks, that sort of thing. Um, this kind of horrid smell of these kind of decaying bodies kind of is threatening to overwhelm you, but yeah, rummaging around, you can't find much. Um, you see these two sad, lonely corpses wrapped up in each other's arms, basically. I'm gonna leave the locket mm -hmm. with her. Mm -hmm. Just leave it there. You, um, you notice that wherever this is in the sewer, it must be so far away from any openings that you can't hear the dirge singer's song. It's probably hmm. why the body is. Is it nighttime currently? I don't it know. Is, yeah. Yes, right. it is nighttime okay. currently. Not that you can tell where you are. No, I just think that. Um, yeah? Well, once you're done hunting lunch, um, maybe we can move on. Carry on towards the clock tower. Carry on? Yeah, I mean, we could, I guess we could take some of the stuff from the camp. Whoa. I mean, like, the, the Testament and Libram are, like, picking up the water skins and they're smelling it and it seems fine. They hoist them onto their let's, shoulders. Let's, let's leave stuff, some stuff. I, have some I will not take anything that is of a personal nature to them, but we need water. What if that's a, a family heirloom water skin? Then I will return it once we are done. But I am thirsty. This water seems clean for the time being. I am immune to poison. If I take a sip, I could tell. You are more than welcome. I can purify it if required. Libra hands it over to you. Take a sip. Seems fine. It's, it's a bit stale, but <laughs> like, yeah, it seems yeah, okay. Yeah, Do you know the... if you're immune, though? Yeah, because you can feel the, like, tingliness. Okay, cool. I would argue that, yeah, like, if it was rancid water, Juto would know, or if it was poisoned <gasps> or sickened, yeah. Okay, fair enough. 
She might be immune to poison, but she'd still be able to tell. But yeah, they take it back. They drink. They can see that they actually start eating some of the rations and stuff as well. Like they, they seem quite hungry and thirsty. They've been prisoners for a while. I just want to like kind of close up their tent respectfully mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. kind of like just yeah. say a couple of quick prayers. Yeah, sure. You like take on your kneel, uh, take a knee, whisper some tiefling prayers, and yeah, it's just this awkward silence um, that emanates around. Cool. Carry on. Carry on. Okay. Ten minutes after you leave, you start making your way through this kind of network passageway of these things. You see two giant rats now watching from behind you, like they're following you. When you killed the first rat, is there a small chance you cut it in half and it made two of them? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, you saw it. It exploded. We don't know what the dark powers do. It does seem like they are different. They seem slightly different in size. If we kill these two, will four come? No. The more concerning fact is that these are probably spies, or at least providing intelligence to their master. Yes. Oh. Um, I feel like time, can't see that. time is against us all of a sudden. <laughs> and they are actively watching us, like following us as well. Yeah. As they we appear walk. to be. They seem more intelligent than the average. They're trying to be stealthy, but... Um, with your passive perceptions, you just spot them. Like they're scurrying along, trying to be low and quiet, but you glance back, they're there watching. Did it seem like they died very easily? I mean, yeah, like they, they're quite hearty. They're like, they, they look tougher than a rat, a normal rat, because they're massive, but they didn't, yeah, they died pretty easily. Like his bolt literally Did it have any survival one. instincts or was it too quick to even It was tell? too quick. Like he was trying to run, like he, he started to run Testament's ax, cut off his leg, and then the bolt just I'm going to throw Literally a Nimbus at one of them. Okay, sure. Make an attack roll. You have, have advantage. They're surprised. Um, 15. 15 hits. Sneak attack. Uh, yeah. Wait, why am I rolling that? I roll my little scroll. I wouldn't worry about battle music, Sam. <laughs> this, <laughs> this isn't going to last very long. <laughs> 17 damage. 17 death. Just like, I mean, Divine literally Nimbus like... Divine immune to poison. Uh, it's not. Um, it literally, the thing kind of shudders and then falls down dead. The other, the other one, one does dead? try and run. The other one oh. tries to run away. Right on, get it, get it, get the rat! I'm um, uh, <laughs> Hunter's Mark. Okay, you cast Hunter's Mark on it, yeah. That's your um, bonus action. Testament throws an axe at it, he hits. Oh. To tell them uh, <laughs> it's all in your mind. Cuts into it, but doesn't quite kill it. It okay. scampers up to a wall and starts wiggling its way through like two loose bricks, and it's like getting into the walls basically. And I'm gonna yell, like, stop, stop, stop! We leave it. Let it run. Why? I can. Track it will report it. back. It will report back, but they, they can see us anyway. So I think they can you? see us regardless of where the rats get back to us. I'm gonna four come. Now what are the maths? If well, we killed one but left the other, does that mean there's going to be three that come? We encountered some wolves outside the city limits, and they appeared to have the same intelligence as if they were something was watching through their eyes. Mm. I think that is the case with these creatures. It would be well, useful to see where this one goes, at the very least. Yes. So can you just read out what Hunter's Mark exactly does in yeah, terms of tracking? Like how long it lasts and stuff? Uh, and what range it has? I also have to cast it at level two, by the way. Okay. Um, so you choose a creature you can see within range and mystically mark as your quarry until the spell ends. You have advantage Up on any now. wisdom or wisdom survival check to make you make to find it. Okay. Um, and I cast it at second level. And how long does it last? What range? Is it just an hour? Up to unlimited, an hour. Up, unlimited range? Um, Seems to be. Uh, okay. 90. It says range 90 feet. That's like the range to cast it, yeah. yeah. Okay, so after that I would say that it just is in depth. It's almost like you can pick up its track. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's more that you don't know exactly know where it is, but you can pretty much you figure out where it, it went. You can Blood track trail. it easily. Do you want to try and follow it? I just want to... I guess if I've got Hunter's Mark on it, I know it's more of a mystical thing, which isn't necessarily a regular thing, but um, I just want to see where it's going, like what track it's taking, what route it's <coughs> taking. You wouldn't have yeah, to so you can make it. a survival check. You'd have to follow it, okay. but you can get a vague idea of where it's going. Yeah, I'll follow it. So you it. can look at like where this little hole where it's entered the wall, you can make a, a survival check. You have advantage because of Hunter's Mark. Uh, cool. Uh, and that was what? Perception? Survival. No, survival. Six. Six. Uh, 24. 24. Okay. So looking at the rat and the hole it's made, 
Um, you suspect it's kind of making its way to maybe just like another part of the sewer, like maybe a, like maybe leading up to the surface. You're not quite sure though. Yeah. Um, it's difficult to tell because you're not following it. Following Should it. we uh, keep moving? Unless you want to get in the brick hole. I mean, I can't fit. <laughs> maybe you can. I can push you in. Let us make haste. We are in dangerous. You want to head off? Yep. Okay. Times. Right. <laughs> so you start times. making your way. Um, and leaning through, with Reynolds kind of and Juto's help, like leaning through this, this network of tunnels, you eventually come out into, Reynolds, you would have figured like, you know a little bit about city architecture, kind of, kind of having learnt it as part of your education and things like that in mm -hmm. Tansval. You head to what you think might have been sort of like, kind of like the central flow chamber, like an area which kind of helps keep like the, the sewer knowing where to send, where to channel waste and stuff like that. But as you get closer and closer, like, the waste is beginning to overflow onto the banks of like the, the chamber and it's building up almost as if it's kind of got flooded or like plugged in. Um, if you would all like to place your miniatures sort of over here. <laughs> hey. We need like... So Reynard's kind of leading the way. Or, you know. Yeah, like little sticks. Little sticks. <laughs> so you're sticks. leading the way, Reynard, and you lead them into a very large chamber. It's actually like for once you actually don't feel as closed in. Um, and there are little beams of light coming down from like little tiny circles like built into this dome ceiling, which kind of oh. lead down. Oh. Um, huh? Thank you. Um... You lead them in we'll and you can, like, the, the waste is just building up and it's kind of like overflowing and looking down into the main chamber, you kind of have to go down to some steps. It gets quite thick, like probably up to sort of like ankles or maybe deeper of waste. Um, but the way that you need to head to go forward is directly across. Yeah. And you can see that parts of it kind of peering in with your little flashlight, there are parts which have collapsed in on themselves um, and have kind of clogged it up. And I don't know if Sam can get map cam up. There's a map there as well. Yeah. Da, 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 we're here. Yeah, so they're there. So you can see that there's these large areas of rubble which have kind of caved in, and one of them at least has con like kind of stopped the, the waste from flowing properly, and so it's building up. And it's formed very thick kind of sludge. Mm. Mm. Right can, I see what, can I see what that is in the middle there? Um, it looks like partly, like again, more stone flooring. Like, it just looks like partial stone. Is there enough light from these shards to create an ambience so we can see the you can see You can see around, like, yeah. <clears throat> you can also see, um, with just the light, you can see that on the far side, there is a ornate looking stone door with Ooh. stairs, kind of like a little bit of like short, like little, um, couple of stone steps leading up to it with two statues of armored figures um, in cloaks kind of guarding it. And it looks quite ornate. How much blue sharpie did you use? <laughs> 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 There's a bit of green in there. There's a bit of yep. green too. It's fine. Jesus. It's very detailed. I like it. Thank you. Uh. <laughs> I used uh, some map making tips from Chris Perkins himself on how to make rubble look a bit use better. Use all the blue sharpie. Use all the blue sharpie, yeah. Uh, okay. So, Reynard, lay you like down to... your cape. Huh? Like a gentleman. Come on. <laughs> I don't have my cape. I gave it to Gronka. Where's your cape? You gave it to Gronka. Give it to Gronka. God damn romance. Right, lay down your body. Use it as a raft. <laughs> You've got if, a cape. Lay down yours. If Mr. Ferrohorn says that we must, I mean, we we just have to traipse our way across this. No. Place. I mean, I suppose it's like. We've been wading our way through a sewer. Juto got really me these so new bad? garments. I'm going to get them. Could we freeze it? I'm sure you could wash afterwards. I don't know. I mean, there's. Are you familiar with the concept of washing? Oh yeah. So Rain. Water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not unsurprised by your answer. This is Libram. Like looks at you and then looks at Juto. Gives a sort of nod. Is um, there any ledges? You can on see the that side? there's like a slight smirk in her face when she looks at you. Are there any ledges? Yeah, what do you mean? Like this side path here. Yeah, you can see like there are little bits of stone path and things like that. Like, but a lot of this waste is just like bleh, over the side. Are the walls <laughs> flush? Um, are there any handholdy kind of grips between bricks? Uh, I mean, what along the walls? Mm. Yes, I suppose there would be. Yeah. I'm gonna try and climb along here. I mean, to... you don't need to climb. Like, there's. There's footing, like you can, like the the waste of the it, stone is there. Yeah, but it's waste, right? Some of it's waste, and then some of it is stone. <coughs> I'm going to carefully stick to the stone bits. Okay, to, where are you moving to? To, to there? Yeah, to yeah, you just corner. move there. Yeah. 
Can I use like my elemental stance stuff to like just shift things a little bit? It says create earth, wind, water, fire, then... You, so you can create like a gust of wind, like, mm, like you try and blow some of it away and some of it kind of like goes off, but this stuff is thick, it's like a thick sludge. And it's not just like waste, like fecal waste, some of it is like, almost like, a, almost like a black, thick, congealed blood. Yeah. Um, you can oh. see like arms, like pot body parts sticking oh. out of it. Oh, what? How like are you there are? is actual like um, Mark, how are food you? waste, like that's like kind of turned into a mulch. <laughs> I know it's January and things are a bit dark and gloomy and stuff. But, it's like, an embodiment of his soul. You're right. Yeah. Good. Feel what are you guys good? doing? Uh, I guess I'll follow Cam as well and sort of okay. try and take the side path. Can so I you want to move around here? Yeah. And this, um, these rubbly bits here. Are they super tall and like? Yes, they're basically across? they basically that area is impassable. Right. The thick black rocks is pretty much impassable terrain. So we're gonna have to go through the <laughs> shit. Anyway. No, there's yeah. an arm. I can see an arm floating. I can see it too. Um, it doesn't have fingernails. <laughs> oh, this is gross. I can move across liquids without falling during the move. Mm -hmm. So I can walk on water essentially. Yeah. I'd like to Jesus it, please. Okay. Is it like that lizard that does the, the crazy run? The <laughs> 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 two legs. So where, where do you want to go? So you've got um, like 50 foot movement, right? Can I 10, sort of 15, lead? 15, 20, 25, uh, 30, 35. Actually, let me, can I go towards this rubble pile? 40, 50, yeah, you mm -hmm. get to there. And then what, double move up to here? Yeah, okay, yeah, so you get up to there. Yeah, it's pretty much impassable. Like it completely spills out. Um, does it look like if I kind of, you know, wham my um, Guandao handle in anywhere, I could maybe lever a few rocks out or anything. You might, you'd be at risk of making it worse if you do that. Cool. You can try, <laughs> no. you can try, but no. you, you think that unfortunately it looks so unstable that if you didn't do it right, you could cause a bit more of the ceiling to collapse in as cool. well. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. We okay. don't know how deep it goes or if we're gonna get some disease from being in it. Okay, well at this point, like what do you guys wanna do? Well, you know what? Are you gonna try and step across it? After hearing the truth about my uncle's tales, I know they're not perfect and I know they're not clean. I'm going to start walking right through it. Okay, so that's what Reynard's doing. What's everyone else doing? Are you just watching Reynard? Wait, wait. Of... You're walking through that as an analogy of your uncle's history. <laughs> I would expect an adventurer to basically clean. move up with him. I'll go with Reynard as well, especially because okay. I know he's afraid of the dark. So where are you guys heading? So you've got 30 feet of movement, Reynard. Right now, in this the... lunch. Yep. I'm just going to make it to this little... 10, 15, 20, what is that? 30. Yeah, is that a wall or is that a platform? It's probably a gelatinous cube. That it appears like you look at it and it's like almost like part of um, uh, like a, a platform or something like that. Due to you start, do you so want to head towards Reynard? Yeah, above, so you can be about there. Um, yeah. So one thing, Reynard, as you start moving, what are you doing, Cam? Actually, before I start explaining, watching stuff? them. You're just going to stand by and watch that, okay? So you got, you guys got this. As everyone starts moving across, there are definitely parts where it feels like it's more sludge than platform you're moving on. Um, I would like everybody to make perception checks to start with. Uh, not Cam, you're okay Cam. We're all about to get eaten by a trash monster. <laughs> <laughs> you're about to get eaten by a trash monster. So. Taking you with me. I'm not, I'm gonna get eaten by a trash monster. What'd you get? I got 25. Okay, five. Okay, so everybody, has to make dexterity saving throws, but Reynard, you get advantage. Hey. You go to step on something and you're like, that doesn't look right. Um, so dexterity saving throw. Not me, I assume. No, you're That's fine. Do I get any... Evasion helps with things like explosions. No. Not at this point. You can maybe do something later, but you, you would have to kind of be aware of it to use those abilities. 13. 13, what'd you get, Reynard? 23. With your advantage, okay. So, Juto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Librum and Testament, you kind of start moving and your foot just kind of sinks into the ground would, and then it starts pulling you down. Would my unarmoured movement though, would that, because I'm kind of walking on top? It's not fully liquid. I'm Jesus. It's I'm somewhat Jesus. magical. So at I'm this on the point, ceiling. everyone roll initiative. Oh. Um, I don't have a pencil so I'm going to need to borrow one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Oops. Katie, Extra can you cutesy. can you roll one as well, just so we've got you here? Uh, shit. Right. Shit. 
Now it's time for battle. Am music. I having a nice leisurely well, stroll? Yeah. You're yeah, 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 yes. No, no, no. At this point, you are being led by Dalstan, the ghost. Does it count as a short rest, having a pleasant conversation? <sighs> a trance-like walk. <laughs> Technically, walking doesn't. I'm afraid. I think she would have been gone for like four hours though, because we Think took like, a short rest. Yeah, you we took did. a short rest, which is one hour. But she's not resting. She's walking. She, mm-hmm. Oh, I see. She's strutting. She's doing so, something. Strutting. Yeah. Strutting. No, unfortunately, no short, no short rest. You get no elementals. Uh, not yet. You can take a short rest later. Obviously, can. What you get on the eleven? Shift? 11, Elora. 15. You're not in it yet, but you might be later on in a second. Reynard. 17. 17. Juto. 13. 13. Libram got. I'm just imagining, like, you know, in Ocarina of Time, when you do the Grave Diggers mission, oh, and he's like, the... you have to follow his floating ghost spirit. Yeah. Oh, I was like that. Those shrieking, like, re dead words. Yeah. So, <laughs> Juto, Testament, and Libram, you are currently restrained. Your movement is zero. Um, and you can feel that this muck, this thick, Icarus, sludge-like substance is sucking you down. Um, I need you to, at initiative 20, uh, you just sink one foot automatically. So how tall is Juto? This is important. Oh, shit. Like, height-wise. Five foot something, six foot? The top end of five foot. It was taller foot. than Elora. So like five foot nine? Five foot, five foot ten? Five foot Five eight, five nine. Yeah. Okay. Five foot nine. I Just out of interest, Cam, what would you say your height is? Uh, about eight foot. Six, six, try again. Six, six foot two. Six foot two. Oh, sure. Wait, no, that's just my vertical. Reynolds. Um, <laughs> I guess he'd be about what six? T- what do you say you were, Cam? He's six two. Six two. Six two. Six two point five. <laughs> <laughs> He's six two. Uh, Elora, you're like uh, tiny, right? Five foot. Well, no, like, because I've got the belt now, so I'm. That just makes you strong. Doesn't make no, you, you tall. Said it did oh, make that was something. Tall. Yes, that it did make so you slightly taller. Yes. I'm probably about the same as Juto, or maybe even a little bit taller than Juto. Yeah. Okay. My horn's bigger. I'd say you'd five foot nine because the whole the horns and stuff give her strength. Okay. Libram is actually slightly smaller than you guys. She's only five foot seven, and then Testament is about six foot. Okay. So Juto. For the purposes of this, I'm seven foot tall. <laughs> you sink about a foot into this this goop. Um, so it's kind of what to sort of just like just below the knee. Um, and you can feel that not only is it pulling you down, but there is something about the, the chemical components of this that is where it hits your skin, it burns. Um, oh, yeah. What would, uh, so that's an issue. An acidy burn or a poisony burn? Very acidy, very acidy. Reynard, it's actually your go first. <laughs> what kind of burn? Acidy uh, burn. A nice Fire. burn. So Reynard, you see them all Less kind of like stop going, hey. Well, this is after I also you kind of like you saw it coming like you kind of put your foot down and you were like that doesn't whoa and then you kind of leap back a little with bit with that i want to so this that is a platform i can stand on that middle bit it looks to be they were all not oh, i mean i'm right next to it mm-hmm. okay i uh, i will try i that guess face. if i've stood <laughs> on something that is gelatinous cube <laughs> <laughs> if i stood on something that i knew to be a trap i'll find some footing that is Obviously not. Yeah, which that no stone platform looks to be. Do you want me to stand? I'm going to stand on the platform then. Okay. I'm going to nudge over to the platform Whoop. and grab a... Yeah, you start Juto. putting your foot down and it's definitely more sturdy stone. Yes. Like maybe looks like it was like a, 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 yeah, some sort of walkway maybe. And now I'm next to Juto, I want to sort of grab her and start trying to pull okay. that out of the... Okay, so you've got two options. You can either give Juto advantage or you can try and make a strength check to pull her out. What would you like to do? I. Uh, I'd be pulling her. So okay, I guess so you make a strength check. Her, so. Hey, get out of there. That's a 17. 17? Yeah, that's enough. He basically pulls you a foot up, so you're not quite free, but he kind of pulls you up a little bit, and he's starting to pull you free, basically, as you get up to the top. Um, so... Is Cam sinking as well? Cam no, is no, at the edge. Yet. Like, he didn't move across it. Like, he just watched the four of you walk at, like, four of you walk. Um, Testament is, like, looking around, and he's trying to get himself free. Um, he doesn't seem to, and you can hear kind of, like, a sizzling sound. Not much, but you can sort is of Is it like it. when you use that stuff to kind of burn your leg hair off? He's your like, legs? a little bit. He's like, ah, but something. But you want to burn your leg off. Ah, I can't get free. Um, and he just starts calling out. Uh, Juto, now it's your go. So, you don't take any damage because he's pulled you enough where it's only your boots, really, like your your shoes are kind of stuck in it. So but can you can, I, you're still stuck. Can I move onto the... 
So you can attempt to make a strength saving throw to get yourself three. This count on my action. It will count as your action, yes. Is there something you would like to try? I'd like to cast fly on my DOS loop. Okay. Uh, you've used levitate, but you've yep. not used fly. I've, I've so, yep. Um, so, so you pull out the DOS loop and you cast fly. The spell lets you fly, but it doesn't automatically free you. So I will give you advantage on the strength saving throw for having the fly spell. It makes you sort of easier to lift yourself. You're not having to struggle. Ooh. 22. 22. Ooh. So you free yourself completely. You are, now, you are now flying up in the air, mm -hmm. um, up high enough. Can I like, you know, use my Gwanda handle to like give... Try and pull them free. Yeah, yeah. you can give them advantage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you lower that down. Uh, so it would be Cam's go next. So you see all of this happening. So Reynard seems to be on st stable ground. Juto is currently flying. It's only Testament and uh, Libram. Libram that are struggling. Mm -hmm. But I'm holding my Guantao down to try and help him. I'm going to <laughs> dimension door to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> so like here. So this. Portion here. Sure. That just move just, yourself. Yeah. Yep. Whoop. Cast a spell. Boom. 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 Mark that off. You guys got it. What's that? Fourth level spell? No, it's. Uh... I think it is the fourth level spell. Yep. Yep. Mark that off. Yeah, marked. Cool. Uh, Libra will take a bit of damage as she is eaten away. And then, uh, was it Libra you were off in the Guandao too? So she has um, advantage. I get, yeah, because. Is that the purple one? Yeah, purple, yeah. yeah. Quite to me, so. Uh, yeah, with advantage, uh, strength say she gets plus three. Um, you lower this down and she just, you manage to like pull her up another foot so she's not as sunk in as she was. Um, Testament is looking a little bit worse for wear on that regard. Um, at the top of the round, Testament sinks another foot and it's now like up to like his knee and he's just like, leave him, please. Uh, and he's like really struggling. You can see him like wrestling around. Um, you were free, weren't you? I'm Testament, fine. you feel beginning to sink further. Um, but because you're helping her, she gets to make a saving throw. Um, and she just barely manages to stop herself being pulled down further. She's just like, Argh! like when you can see her muscles straining, mm -hmm. and you're having to like really strain to keep her pulled up, basically. That Libra more Testament. That was Libra. Libra. Libra um, so, Reynard, you'll go. Uh, I. I'm going to test move in some of the sludge mm -hmm. and like I guess really really slowly move into it but enough so that I well, don't just, like just, just move yourself like where you want to go but you're being cautious right yeah so I don't fall into another trap and I guess <laughs> I'll go next to uh, testament okay yes, unfortunately yeah. you're gonna have to make a dexterity saving throw as you get close enough to him yes. you're being careful but you can see that the area around him has like begun sucking him in and as soon as it gets to your foot you can feel it beginning to try and pull you down so that's oh. a dex saving oh, throw I thought afraid. it was like well, that's what I mean. I want to... Have you ever, ever seen a movie with quicksand yeah. before? You just waited. It's just sludge. Yeah. It's sludge, yeah. yeah. I thought there were like Quick holes <laughs> underneath the no. sludge that you could slip into. What are you doing? You should have stayed on the platform. He's too well, far away. Well, deck saving throw now. Too late. Uh, well, that was almost seven. <laughs> 23. 23? Yeah. yeah, that's the same one I, I thought you rolled a seven. seven. No, no, it was almost. Yeah, almost it. Oh, it almost a seven. Back. I thought you rolled a seven. It like really slowly tipped So you basically, you stumble back to there. Um, it's another deck saving throw as the area around Libram is still pulling her in. Oh, okay. That's not as good. 16. 16 still enough. You basically, you kind of, <laughs> you Sorry, step around no, and wait. you go, oh. <laughs> Sorry, 11. 11? <laughs> I thought it was an eight. You feel your foot. <laughs> At least I'm honest. Actually, no, technically you would have made the save as soon as you entered that square. So no, I'll say that you're there. You wouldn't need to make the second save. <laughs> you wouldn't have actually got to Testament. You would have got to Libram and then gone. Ugh! This is not good. <laughs> How am I going to get to Libram? I've got nothing long. Um, yeah, well, that's kind, of your, that's kind of your action at this point. Like you've you tried to go out. Because she's right there. Well, I was, uh, not Libram. Test I want to get to the Testament. Well, that's the thing. well, if we get Libram out, we can get, I can get Testament. You're doing Libram. Once we get Libram out. I could have done Libram, you could have You're done just Testament. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> Look at Cam Buckland, magic teleport. I'm having a nice chat. Yeah, you're having a lovely Look chat. Juto's yeah. going to shout in six seconds, seeing Reynard doing this, going, Get Libram! Cam, yeah. you suck! 
And I'll, I've got no actions left, <laughs> fair, I suppose. Fair. You can help her. I'm going to help okay. Abram. Yep, sure. Abram. Abram. So, do, 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 do. Testament now takes 2d4 damage. Is that for every inch you sink, you get more? It gets more damage yeah. Yeah. every foot you sink. Um, so, he sinks, and now it's like three foot down. And you can see it's like How up to his waist. Six okay. foot. It's up to his waist. And he's just like... He's halfway Arr! gone. Arr! And he's like trying to like dig his hands into. He's going to make a... Uh, the DC's now higher, so the DC is now... 13, 14, 15. <laughs> he's, just, he's like desperately, and he's just like... ah, By the path! Arr, the sludge! And he's desperately trying to pull himself free. Um, Juto. Mm, can I like swing... Libram is, is, is like, get him, get is, him. Is she kind of like being held by, or at least, I don't know. She's like, she just is like, get him now. He needs your help. Okay, so I kind of nod and I guess she lets go of my bond she, yeah, she like, she, she, As soon as she starts saying help him, she lets go. Okay, and so And you can see I'll her struggling to, to sink. To, but, um, well, I'm, I've got her as well. Yeah, she's, so. yeah, she's going to take your help. I'll, okay. I'll get to testament and lower the guan Okay, down. do you want to try and pull him out or do you just want to give him advantage? Because one requires you doing a lot more strength. One is just giving him the leverage to help himself. Can I do both? Not really. I'm going to give him the leverage. Okay, then, sure. So he'll yeah. have advantage on his next saving throw, basically, yeah. on his next test. <laughs> Uh, Libram currently has advantage thanks to Reynard. Um, she's also going to take. Oh no, she's currently not. Good like, job, Reynard. We all so, just die by sludge. Libram. I just come in and I'm like. Pulls what? herself with 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 Reynard's help. She kind of is like Argh! and throws herself up onto the thing. Um, but you are basically now trapped on this little island of like stone um, in front of this thing. Um, <clears> she like looks at him and she's just like. <sighs> What can I do? And she's like, she's just like desperately like, she kind of like tries to reach out a hand, but it's not long enough. He's like 10 feet away. She's just like, please, Juto, t please help him. I'm um, trying. Cam Buckland. <laughs> I'm like, ah, <laughs> great. I'm panicking on the edge and I'm like, <laughs> is that what you do? No. Uh, okay. Once <laughs> well, he starts realizing how serious yeah, this like, actually is. <laughs> Nimbus, tying hempen rope to it. Okay, I'm give gonna... me just a quick dex check to see how good the knot is. Plus you can, um, you can add dex okay. modifier. 18. Okay, yeah, it's a good strong knot, like... <laughs> I'm gonna throw an arc and try and plot it in okay. front of... So make a range attack, it is gonna be disadvantaged because it's long range. Because you're trying to throw it like... 60 quite, feet. Yeah, 60 feet, basically. <laughs> Natural 20 and then 18. 18. Ooh. So you're like, okay, okay. Cam Buckland! <laughs> <laughs> you say your name, it inspires you, and the deck actually arcs really well. Your and own name inspires you. You kind of use like the twice. weight of the magic to kind of throw it, and the, the rope basically lands next to him. Do you call Nimbus back? Yes. So it turns to cloud form and floats back to your Ding. hand, but the rope is rope still stays there. there. Exactly, because it's clo it returns, turns yeah. to cloud, and it turns back. So he grabs yeah, onto great. the rope now. So he's got one hand on the rope and one hand on Juto's guan dao. Yeah, you can see it. that if this, if he sinks more, one of his hands is probably going to go under. So uh, this could be potentially his last chance to have both of his hands free. Um, so at the top of the round, he sinks. Um, it's an initiative thing. So one of his hands, the hand that was holding the rope, is now underneath the sludge, but his hand holding the guandao is still up, and he's holding on to it. He is going to attempt a strength saving throw with advantage because of Juto. The highest I rolled was a seven. Oh! So he's still stuck. Oh. Um, so he's just like... Is like, his head above it? He's basically, he's kind of got like, like this. He's, got like he's kind of got like, he's it. got like his upper hand, but most of his hand is underneath this sludge. Oh. Um, I forgot to roll his damage as well. He now takes 3d4 acid Woo. damage. 10. Gonna do a thumbs up before it goes under. <laughs> <laughs> dun 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 dun. <laughs> Shit. Uh, Reynard. Um, we'll do one more uh, round, then we're gonna go on a um, break. Um, mm. Really, Laura, I'll come back. Uh, mm. like, mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna throw my net. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, what do you get? So, so <laughs> in you the threw same, the net in the same thing. Think, like, no, no, not to cover him. <laughs> no. To like lace the area in front of okay. him, and I guess that would just be something to grapple yeah. on. He's still holding the rope, even underneath the sludge. You could try and pull him free still. Okay, like, it was this not is my the turn, though, isn't it? No, no, no. I'm just saying. Yeah. So you threw the, the net options. open, but he's just like, give him he's, the like he's like, he's <laughs> like, he's like, I can't let go of Cam's rope. I can't. If I let go of it, I'll never get it again. 
take my net back then. <laughs> <laughs> just barely managed to pull it. I probably should make you make a strength saving throw to see if you can get it back. It's a net. I'm, I'm probably going to make you make a strength saving throw. Oh, he's lost I the net already. To, no, I'm using I the net. I kind of love the ongoing joke that he's still got it. Uses still the got net. It. Just this hole. 19. 19. You're like, I'm not losing this <laughs> net. <laughs> <laughs> That's my up. net. It's covered in <laughs> gold, but oh, yeah, God. it's fine. Fuck's <laughs> <laughs> um, Right. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I know you don't know what to do. I'm going to leave it that. Okay. I think I can help. I can tell Libram. She's got the broadsword, hasn't she? No, he's got the broadsword. I don't know. I might be able to do You can begin to, like, he's like, ah, like crying out in pain from the thing. Um, his turn, he's going to try and get himself out. This time he does manage to, with the advantage, um, let's see, he's four feet, so that's plus four to the DC, 17. He just makes it. Uh, uh, he pulls himself up with one hand, and then as he gets the other hand free, he like pulls onto the ground, and you're almost being dragged down to the surface of this thing, but he's like pulling himself up, and he's like, back up, Tuto, back up! Um, where are you going to try and pull him towards? So is he free so, like, entirely? Yeah, he's basically going to pull himself entirely free. Wow. Is it my turn next? Or is well, it, he's basically, he's basically his... telling you pull him somewhere as he's pulling himself up. I'll try and go to the platform. Will so they So he can just, him, like yeah. the three of them are basically there. Yeah. Um, and I guess they kind of hook him. Yeah, and then they pull him up and get yeah. him free, and then you are basically free to fly up. Is there anything else you'd like to do now that you've helped him get free? So they're all you, stuck there, aren't they? They're basically on this little platform, yeah. But we've got the rope that's connected to Cam right now. Yeah, he's holding that, yeah. Okay. But the rest of the rope is kind of like in this ledge. Yeah, he's kind of pulled it free along with oh, Juto okay. pulling him up. So isn't I, like, I probably am not strong enough to like carry them over. You like, can try. What would you like to do? It's your turn. I have a potion of frost giant strength, and I'm wondering Ooh. whether or not to save it for something else because we could probably use. It's up to you. It's your turn. Rubble. The bell is occupied. <laughs> the ghost occupied. Just Just occupied. Having a nice little chat at the moment. Oops. Well, what would um, you like to use? I'm, sl I'm tiny clapping. Yay! <laughs> In the distance. Uh, which one looks the lightest? Uh, Testament, actually, Libram is wearing chainmail with a shield, but she's also <laughs> stronger. Um, Reynard, yeah, he's got a lot of equipment and he's a bulky boy. Um, a bulky boy. boy. <laughs> but yeah, Testament's probably the lightest. What if we tie the rope to one of your crossbows? And, no, because we've already got a line got out, haven't we? Yeah. Am I able to talk in this round? You can talk. I mean, this, is no, this isn't a combat yet, so it's kind yeah. of like the initiative is to determine, like, oh no, scary things are happening. Red, red, red up! Cam! Red up! Get a spiritual weapon. Yeah. To hold the rope on this end. You hold the rope on that it's end. It's ethereal. Uh, yeah, I was going to say you would know that it can't physically hold it. Idiot! Something. I'm the idiot! You, know you want in the I sludge! Otherwise, I'm going to move on. Can I try <laughs> and. Can I, can I fly like, above the platform? And test picking like testament, <laughs> test picking testament up make, make to, to see like <laughs> how <laughs> sucky it is. Pure strength to just. D20. But I'm not. But I'm not moving. I know. Anyway, so just, if I drop it, this drop is to see how powerful. much like you can reckon you can lift. I'm gonna kill Cam when I get it. <laughs> Nine. Nine. Nice. Like you're just not strong enough yeah. to lift this guy. So uh, Libram is gonna try and heal uh, testament because it's her friend. Um, <laughs> I just threw a d20 across myself. She's going to cast it at second level because she doesn't want to use up too many of her spells. Five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. So he goes down to 17 again. <coughs> okay, 17 damage taken. So she is healing him. Cam Buckland, what is your passive perception? It is 14, I believe. Oh, you begin to hear uh. a noise coming from behind you down the sewer gateway tunnel. You hear a. <coughs> 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 And as you glance down, can you just put that at the edge of the map? No. I'll, um, I'll just put it here. Nope. Edge of the map. Edge of the map. Edge of the map. Edge of the map. Behind can. In that little sewer. Yep. Put it there. You know where it goes. Come on. I want to piss. Come on. You turn around and you can see with these kind of glowing ruby eyes. This is as I'm saying. Idiot. And you can see <laughs> these giant stone wings beating behind it. Its feet are kind of actually held off the ground and the beating, the, the thumping you could hear is these wings occasionally scraping against the stone. 
a four-armed gargoyle cool. making its way towards you. And we're going to take a break there because cool. Mark really needs a wee. Cool. Um, and I need to get some extra bits. We'll be um, back what? in five. No. Yolk minutes. We'll be five, back ten as minutes. soon as we can. As soon as we yeah. can, but give us about ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. We'll be back in a minute. See you soon. Bye. Don't miss this crazy combat. Goodbye. Bye.
We're back! Whoa. Hello, welcome. That was nice loud, we're back for that you. That was very loud. Welcome back. Um, we are in the middle of a dangerous situation here in High Rollers. Yeah. But, you know what isn't a dangerous what situation? Way. What? Buying the last remaining dice sets because Woo! they're almost sold out! Yeah, we're not restocking our dice sets. One Dangerously low out. stock levels. Yeah. Yeah. It's dangerous Let, well, if you wait. When Mike told me earlier in the week there were less than, less than 100. 100. So less you, than 70, I think. Less than 70. So, um, if you want to get one of our original metal dice sets, one of the silver metal dice sets, not the Dead Reckoning sets. They will never be out. replaced. They will never be replaced by them now. Also, it's half price on all posters. You can get a high, high rollers poster for five pounds. Also come and see us at Insomnia because we're doing a live show and it'll be super, super, super fun. It'll be super fun. There's more details of that in our pinned tweet on at high rollers DND on Twitter. With that, <laughs> let's crack back in. You're just trying to hide a burp there. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't burp. <laughs> Drunk two beers. <laughs> Fine. Um, right. He's totally so, in control of the situation. Mainly, yeah, I am in control of the situation, but I will burp a lot because it's very gassy. <laughs> it's Mark. You always so, burp uh, a lot. So, the Cam Buckland, you are the last one to act, and you hear this creature. You are. It's your turn, and when you hear this creature coming from down this tunnel. I probably just go into complete shock. Cock! Cock oil! Cock oil! Help! And, uh, Is that your turn? That will be my movement. Okay. <laughs> Is my mouth moving? And I'm going to cast. Shit myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to shit myself and then. Can you actually see Shout it? Shout for help. I'm actually going. Yeah, apparently I did see it. Yeah, I looked around the corner. He's right next to it. Well, it's just because of that wall corner bit there. I think Shut up. So, for Elora's benefit, Hi. Uh, you have been taken, led by this ghost, um, and you are basically brought to what is a, a large stone door. Um, mm -hmm. And where he points you in a corridor which leads to a stone door. Do I get a grand entrance all of my own? And you hear, you hear Cam Buckland basically doing the. Oh, for so course. you're gonna go and you're next in this, no. on your initiative in the next turn. In my time off. with the ghost, I just want to reassure him that he's a good person and that it's not his the fault. The ghost appreciates that. He well, he you can't dissuade him from the fact that it's his fault. He feels well, very responsible I want, for I indulging to... Karen's black interests or dark interests. Dark. I just interests. want to make it clear to him that he should be able to rest because. In informing me of the situation, he has helped and done good things. Yes. When he he basically tells you that when when Karen is destroyed, he will leave to pass on. Okay. Daddy Black Herp will remember that. Okay. Good. <clears throat> I'm still waiting for Cam Buckland to decide what name? he's doing. Mm. Are you using D and D Beyond there to look up I some just spells? Don't tell me. Yeah. You're gonna tell me. Um, um, just okay. going down the trickery. I'm basically going to go invisible Dal's with my channel stand. divinity. So you can use channel divinity to stay invisible for one round. Yes. Okay. I'll be like, nope. You don't know that. So you know. So Cam Buckland just goes ga 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 and then vanishes. <laughs> yeah. From sight. Yeah. Oh. Okay. What right. have, you, have you just gone invisible? Yeah. Rain off. Technically, am I still invisible? Oh, uh, in fact, actually, no. It is the gargoyle's turn. Oh. Um, so the gargoyle flies. Uh, I'm going to have to come round. Cloak of Shadows, it's called. That's the one. Yeah, I know. So oh, is that your sixth second? It's the end of my next turn. Until the oh. end of your next turn. That lasts longer than we thought it did then, doesn't it? He would sail right past Cam Buckland. Hmm. Yay. He's close. So he <laughs> swoops into the room, basically. Yay. Um, uh, and it just, like, you can see that this is much larger than the gargoyles you saw outside, like significantly larger. And it has these large four muscular stone arms and then these giant pairs of wings. And it's basically flying above the sludge-like uh, floor as it just looks around. Um, it would probably see Reynard, Libram and Testament on the ground. Oh. And it basically swoops in. It like does like a swooping dive to attack you. Um, okay, so. Four attacks. Uh, we'll do four. one, two, God. three, four. Don't right. hit me twice. It's gonna hit you twice. You so, fine. You can take it. Okay, so that's gonna be Testament first, who has a natural twenty against him. You know how to kill a full armed creature. Do we? Um, do we still have the? A couple of sessions ago, you gave us like ten extra HP. 
That was eight hours. Eight hours. Yeah. So I think that's. No, we should still technically yeah. be active now. Okay. Yep. Wow. You've not had a long rest. You only had a short rest. You're probably in sort of like the last hour of it though. So. The last of this combat. That's eighteen yeah, doubled. Thirty-six. Yeah. Thirty-six. Yes. Thirty-six. He's dead. Forty-one. Forty-one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Natural twenty, didn't he? The gargoyle got natural twenty. Yep. Hey, speaking of natural 20s, guess you got so, advantage and rolled two natural 20s last session. So the gargoyle ro- like swoops in. As it swoops down, time. it clips a uh, testament with its clawed hand. And, I mean, if he hadn't been such a, a physically well-trained man, it probably would have snapped his neck. Um, it catches his head, but he manages to kind of like push him his own... Like, he kind of almost jumps with the blow, so it doesn't lift him up and snap his head back. But you can see it like rips most of like the flesh out of his face and jaw. Oh his God. jaw snaps as he like flies back. Um, the second blow from the gargoyle... I mean, that was a natural 20. Um, the second blow going towards Libram, <laughs> where he's going to actually miss... Um, Because she has her shield now, Um, Mm. so her AC is high. She brings the shield to bear as it just like (laughs) rakes across against it. Mm -hmm. And then two of these blows, these two lower arms, one's going to come in for you, Reynard. Uh, The first attack is going to miss. The second attack, however, is going to be a 26. That hits. (laughs) Okay. Um, So what it's going to do is instead of doing damage, the second arm Mm. grabs you and pulls you into a tight embrace and the two lower arms wrap around you and hold you next to its body. I don't suppose I can resist that. Uh, You can on your turn. You can attempt to escape on your turn. Um, As it basically wraps around you and it's in fact, it's your turn now. So you are currently grappled. Um, Um, You can attempt to escape using athletics or acrobatics. Is Axel on my hip loose from that grapple? Uh, You could probably command it to get free. You can probably make it like go underneath and out of its scabbard and stuff like Um, that. I want a bonus action to command that and have it almost strike the uh, joint of the arm that is mm-hmm. holding me. Okay. Um, so that is. Ooh. Ooh. That's good. Roll. Mm, 18, 26. <laughs> 18. Yeah, that's going to hit. <clears throat> One D8. Plus D8. What's D8? Where's D8? What's a D8? Who's a D8? Diamond. I'm a D8. Diamond. Oh, damn. I'm a D8. <laughs> eight, <laughs> eight damage. Eight damage. Yeah, okay. Um, Axel is a magical weapon, so it kind of strikes into the creature's back and it, it just you hear this scraping of stone but it's holding you tight okay and it's using its two other arms as if it's readying more attacks so i want to struggle against that as it hits okay so you're going to make an att- you can try and get out yeah so athletics or acrobatics <laughs> does i get an advantage from struggling as it hits fortunately not this thing doesn't take pain it doesn't know what pain is good six six you're like struggling, you're like kicking your legs, you're, but this thing is so strong, it's holding you tight to its body. Uh, and that's, I guess, all I write. You can try and melee attack it, you can't really use the crossbow, um, but you could try and like <coughs> melee attack it somehow. You still have your action, you can still use your action, you're just grappled. I mean, I'm just gonna kick wildly. <laughs> <laughs> flail. I'm going to flail, yeah, so flail start to flailing. try and unbalance it. it how, it, how much bigger than it? Me, is it? I mean, it's large. It's like 10 foot tall, massive, like really oh. wide, muscular. Uh, when it missed me with an attack, I could have got a reaction. Okay. Is that too late to say that? Uh, you, can make the, you can make the attack. It was within five feet, so if you make an attack with will uh, with your crossbow, you will be at disadvantage. I will say it was too late. Okay. I said it now. Just to... You were surprised. Yeah. You were surprised. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to kick wildly. Almost to unbalance it, not to attack it. Okay. You know, so I'm like, he's got me, and I'm just like writhing around like okay. crazy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. Sure, that sounds good. Um, so you start like writhing around, and you can see it's struggling, but it's it's holding you in place. <laughs> um, at that point, Elora. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> you push open these two stone Grand doors. Yep. I like to think of it as when Aragorn throws mm. the doors open in the hall in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> dun, dun, yeah. dun, 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 dun. The beacons are lit! No, um, what an amazing what, shot so, I know that this floor is sludge-like. But, but Elora seeing, does not. But seeing them on that platform, would I gather any sort of knowledge of Give this? Give me an insight check. Mm. That's pretty good. 
18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So you immediately go to start standing out, and I guess um, the others would be like, uh, like while they're battling, like Libram throws out a hand, and you look down and you can see this thick <coughs> sludge everywhere, and you can see that Cam is stood on solid ground, oh, and the others are. Oh no, yeah, you don't see him. But you can see the others are all stood on solid ground, and Juto is flying. They're purposely not standing, not on, this standing thing. on this. They're not standing on this. So I would say okay. that as Elora kind of with that insight check, you're like. D d something. Floor bad. You don't know floor what bad, is wrong, good. but yeah, you just figure that the floor is somehow um, bad. Floor is lava. In which case, floor I would like there to it is. I would like to cast wall of stone, but to make platforms across. That the sounds floor. very clever. Uh, okay, uh, so smart, smart, smart. I would have done. So, <laughs> what can you create you with wall of stone? And went invisible. <laughs> um, so, uh, on the uh, what does it say on the spell? On it. Ba -ba -ba -ba. An, a wall of solid stone springs into existence at a point you choose. The wall is six inches thick and is composed of ten foot by ten foot panels. Each panel must be connected to another, or you could create ten foot by twenty foot panels that are only three inches. Uh, ten, yeah, three inches thick, so I can what do you cover want to more area. Do you want to create the, uh, the three inch panels would be, you know... Ten foot by ten foot panels. Ten, it's ten ten by ten panels. Okay. So... Yeah. I want to cover the most area that so I they can. So really. what they would have to do though, is they would have to start at the from, wall yeah, and then stretch and then out. And touch right. the platform. Did they not do it from the rubble? Yeah. Mm, the rubble's not like secure enough, it's like rubbly. it's kind of like filled in. Okay. You don't know how deep underneath this thing is. Yeah. Okay. So I have 10 panels that are yeah. 10 foot. 10 foot by 10, by 10 foot. foot. So basically a four by four square. So or I, I can do 10. 10, 10 by 20. That you could do thinner. three inches, <laughs> yeah. 10 by 20 foot. Oh god. Yeah, I don't and know. That's pretty much going to be your action. So two squares oh, yeah, wide and then you um, can move. So, but I'll move on with the initiative when you do that. I don't know what to... So five inches uh, for a square. So 10 foot is... Yeah, uh, so two squares wide, four squares long. If you uh, while you're doing that, Testament is just going to do the only thing he can that's do, which is to try and strike the, um, the creature um, yeah. that's hitting him. Uh, he does hit, but his weapon is non-magical, so he's going to do half damage. Oh, no. Eight. <laughs> so he pulls out them. the giant greatsword. He looks really injured, unfortunately. Mm. Um, mm. That's going to be eight, nine, ten, half to five. Not too long. What is it? You're doubling it, yeah. You well, can just have it as a double. So it's, uh, it's four by four, each panel. I'm sure doing the, yeah. the ten by twenties. Are you doing the ten by twenties? The ten by three yeah. Thick. So yeah, that last one is just one. Uh, one or you could just double up two together. Yeah. It's hard to see where the... I mean, you've There's got too much blue on it! It's too much blue! <laughs> oh, well, I need you to indicate it for the camera. Okay. Um, so that was Testament's go. Juto. <laughs> Is it an action to drink a uh, potion of frost giant strength? I would say it would, if you're going to feed it to yourself, I'll let you do it as a bonus action. Okay. Because you were kind of thinking of doing it before as well. I would like to drink a potion of frost giant strength. I believe, what is your strength, Laura? Is it 23? 23. So there you go, 23 strength for one hour. Um, so can a, I? A 23, by the way, is a plus six modifier. And if any Pretty point, sweet. you can use that instead of your dex mod for attacks. Okay. What? Yeah. Whoa. Cool. Well, because you either use dex or strength. Yep. So your dex is what, plus five normally? Yep. So just basically, if you make any attacks from while <laughs> you're using this thing, add, add a me. plus one to hit and damage rolls. Okay. Um, so can I grab the rope that was like used to help try and help Testament? Mm -hmm. What I'd like to try and do is like wrap it around the gargoyle's wings. Okay. Like trying to basically trap, AT -AT it. trap the wings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can. How many of these? Can <sighs> I guess this would be. Ten. Just roll a d20 plus your dex mod. It's in the way. Dex or strength? Just dex. Because this is your skill at Wait, trying to wrap it up one, rather one, than like trying to hold it Natural tight. 20. Okay. No! So you spin around and you kind of grab the rope and you fly around this creature with your monk speed um, and you wrap it in these ropes and you actually manage to like hold it taut. Um, currently, Cam is holding the rope um, and you're holding the other end. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's still holding the rope. Um, and it goes taut, and it's kind of wrapped the creature completely around. But I want to make sure, like, it's not on Reynard, so it's not restraining Reynard. So I'm so holding probably, the goggle by a rope. Right? Yeah, he probably so has his bottom legs done? free. I think. Okay. So I'm, I'm being held by the bottom two. Yeah. Oh, that so. is. Yeah. So he's being held by the bottom two. So you've wrapped That's up more the wings. The yeah, back the, of his I wings. want to suck yep. the wings up. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, that sounds great. That would be a full action. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and you're holding the rope, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you're kind of like keeping it taut with your new found strength. I'm basically trying to make him crash into the sludge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. So. <laughs> Wriggle more! Wriggle, you slippery bastard! So, uh, <laughs> Libram, fearful for her friend, is just gonna heal Testament because he is so injured. Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's her turn. She can't really move. Oh no, she can move now. So she will basically move around here, um, and then uh, why have you moved him over there? Mm. Oh, that was that. I was drawing. I'm sorry. Yeah, so he's like that. <laughs> and then she basically starts dragging him towards Laura. <laughs> like she's just like, come on, come on, and like starts dragging him away. Uh, can buckle. Yeah. So okay. I've got the rope. It's now tied to the gargoyle. Yeah. Well, it's wrapped around the gargoyle's wings, and then Juto is holding the other end. Yeah, I'm trying to clip the wings. <laughs> I'm going. Do I just to hear cry? an invisible whimper? Is he's, he's not. Oh yeah, he's still I'm, invisible. Until Laura, then. you can just see this end of the rope. Like, actually, would you have even been able to? Yeah, because Testament was holding it. Like, basically, there would have been this invisible rope that Testament was holding, and he's like, uh? um, Laura, it's a weird situation. Am I smart enough to know that it's Cam invisible? Probably. Yes, you can tell his voice. Uh, catch, catch the rope. <laughs> You're stronger than me. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, range. Just make a d20 plus six. Eight. Oh, the rope lands in the sludge here. You can pick that up. I'm not gonna get that. You can grab that. Does that something. count as my action? Yes. It's basically you like going. Instead of throwing a dagger, it's you going oh, with a rope. Count Buckland. Oh. <laughs> I don't say it for that one. I wasn't confident. Um, <laughs> Only if he's confident does he say his name. <coughs> Sorry. Um, nope, I'm not going to do anything. Okay. Okay. So after Ken Buckland, the gargoyle. I become visible. Um, it has basically one attempt to try and break free of this rope. So you need to roll a d20 falling. plus strength. It's going to start, but it can rip them open. But you make a strength check, so plus six now instead, because it's your frustrating strength. 14. Okay, it crashes into the new stone platforms that Elora has created. He's first. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Fine, I got you boo. You're gonna take six points of bludgeoning damage uh, there, Reynard. Shish. Point <laughs> At least the platform there and you didn't go in the sludge. It kind of like lurches up and its wings, it can see trying, trying to flap them but you're kind of holding it tight. Um, and it just kind of is just like looks up at you and, and like kind of growls. Um, <clears throat> seeing the rope sort of like in the floor and not being attached to anything, it will probably. Hmm. You can tell that you're really strong now. So it will probably. Out of interest, the, the platforms were very thin. It's quite heavy. Why do you shut up? I'm just, no, I like it. I'm just three saying. inches. Do you want to die by acid? I so want to. Yeah, by the way, um, I want to die honest. These are concentration, so. Um. Oh. Oh. I would say I rolled a ninety-one, which I think means it survives. Like I would have had low mini okay. breaks. So it will basically pick you up. Nah. Because it's got you grappled and it can just carry you. While you're <laughs> um, and then it's going to go burr, 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 towards the loose end of the rope. And it's trying to wiggle its wings free. They're not free yet, but they're coming loose as it gets closer to the end you of the rope. You've got the end of the rope. I've got one, one end. end, and yeah. the other end is where um, Buckland dropped it. And then it can basically, it's going to basically do one attack at Buckland and one attack at Elora because it's got its two other free arms. But it's only going to make two attacks because the other two are holding rope. No on. chance. Misses you. I literally rolled a 10. Elora. Fuck me, this dice. 11 yeah. to hit Laura. Good. So it's like. <laughs> it's like throwing itself around. Go, go, go. Reynard, you're going. Um, I'm going to think I'm I'm going to think I'm heavy. You know, when you think you're heavy, you are heavy. <laughs> Tense. It's dead, dead weight. <laughs> Doesn't seem bothered. Uh, <laughs> it's it's, as stiff as it's a almost as strong yeah. as Laura and Juto in their new. with in their potion case, forms. I want to try and push out. As best I can with whatever strength I have. Cool. Athletics or acrobatics. Uh, ooh. 
20, unnatural 20. 20, yeah, so you kind of like, you've been wiggling your way free, and because its attention is focused on its wings being racked up. Dead weight. You're like, dead weight. It kind of drops you a little bit, and you use that to kind of just like wiggle yourself free, um, and you do break free of its grapple. Could it be as well that his clothes are slightly bigger to make him, you know, look like, <laughs> but he's actually quite fit. It like rips his clothing and like yeah. pulls no. his shirt off. But when I come out, my shirt's like super lifted up. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, you look dishevelled, but you break free of the grapples. So and you I'm are next to him, however. I You're want still to, next to him. Uh, in the sludge, mm. or is this the well? Part of the you sludge? can choose where you land. So I'll I, be nice. I want to say that I've I'm landed not, just I'm right in front of him. Uh, On the rope. Pretty much next to the rope. Dexterity saving throw, please. So that, in that the platform outside there. The rope is in You're the sludge. You're on sludge. You landed. I thought there was sludge. like an outer basin. Sort there of are thing. some points, look yes. It, look at that. I mean, you I've, see this I've blue thing. There. I, you know, I, I, I specifically one. said the rope lands here and sinks into the sludge. I didn't see that. I was too busy being carried and Once again, Mark Hazel doesn't listen to Mark Humes. Ha! Oh no. That's a 10. Oh my god. Cool. I'm going leave there. him. Just leave him. I guess I've had an action to shake out. And yes, your action, action was unfortunately to break free. And my bonus action? Still your bonus back? action, you Axel can still attack. I want Axel to fly into the back of him. Yep. And slam sure. him. Sure. Axel can make an attack. Yeah, like you can trip over. Doesn't matter that it rolled out of the On thing. you again. Uh, 23. Hits. Also, I fucked up last time. It's a D6. Uh, 8 damage again. 8 damage. And it's a uh, magical weapon, so yeah, it kind of cuts into the stone back of this creature. Yeah. Uh, but you feel your boot. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and you look down. Elora. Okay. I'm going to. <laughs> I don't know what to do because this is concentration. It's difficult. Difficult! Um, I'm going to blight him. Blight, not concentration, Ooh. I take it? No, blight's not concentration. Okay. So constitution saving through? Yes, please. What's the DC that I have? 17. The combat 17. Ability. And it deals necrotic damage? Yeah. Okay, so it just fails by one. Yay. Woo! Oddly, not proficient in con saving throws, which is a bit weird. Yeah. But, oh, it has advantage against magical saving throws. So yeah. I will roll it with advantage. It unfortunately passes, so it takes ah, half damage. Damn. Takes half damage, takes half damage. You teased okay. us. I forgot it had magic resistance. Ooh. Uh, ooh, so, uh, 16, 17, 18, that was 3. 24. 24. 30. 28. No, 28. How, How many eight? was that? 5? That's 5, yeah. That's 88, right? 33. 36. 38. 38. 38. 38. 38. Halved is 15, 19. That many. So, the the way the blight works is it kind of like, it sucks out moisture and sort of life force from a creature. Yeah. This thing is, seems to be made of pure stone. You can see that the stone crumbles a little bit and breaks away, but yeah, it just seems to, I'm naturally resistant to the spell. But as you cast the spell, its eyes kind of like snap on you, cool. and it's like arms just like, <laughs> um, oh. seems to kind of sense you as a threat. As a threat. A threat. A what threat. can I um, heal as a, Bonus. Can uh, I, what it's up to? Yeah, I'd say you could bonus action, but no more than like third level. Yeah, sure. Like technically, you shouldn't even be able to cast healing word, but I think it's done. The, oh, the spell thing. Yeah, yeah. like oh, look, you cast a spell with an action, you can't cast a bonus action spell. I think it's silly. So. That's the tone that it's written in the player's handbook. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll pass. So you can cast a healing word if you want. Hmm. On your butt. But is healing, healing word concentration? No. I don't think it is. No. It doesn't have an ongoing effect. No, it's instant. Okay, great. Uh, it says casting time one bonus action. Yeah, but normally you're not allowed to cast an action oh, spell okay. and a bonus action spell. Normally. Mm. But I think that's lame. It's pretty lame. Yeah. Um, if you're willing to mark off the spell slots, if you want to burn through your spell slots that quickly. So we're going to witch. No, I don't actually need to be honest. I'm going to burn that I'm dimension door. Thank you. I'm not going to. What? He didn't have a pencil. Yeah. Are you going to hear what? No. No? Okay. So after Elora, testaments go. He's pretty fucking injured still. He's gonna put the greatsword away and he's gonna step back over onto solid ground and to just try and throw th uh, hand axes, two normal hand axes. The first one is going to hit, the second one is gonna miss. That's gonna be two points of damage. 
because it's not a magical weapon. So it's like, and he just bounces off this creature. He's just like, ah! Um, piss. Librum, can you make something of mine magical? She's like, yes, yes, give me a second. Uh, let's go, G2. So seeing that he's um, trying to break free. One, two, yeah, he's like, oh, trying to wriggle out. Uh, I'm going to fly back over and can I like, because obviously there's probably a fair bit of rope. Mm -hmm. I want to wrap again, like try and wrap him up again. Okay, yeah, um, dexterity check. So D20 yeah. plus dex. And this time I'll go around his arms as well if I can. I don't know. Uh, like, if you can try and get some like, of them, yeah. yeah You're probably just, not going to get all four. But... Yeah. Uh, dex check. Yeah, dex saving throws. So uh, sorry, just um, D20 plus dex modifier. 20. Okay, mm. so you manage to kind of like bind up the wings. Um, the the rope is being is sinking down into the, the kind of ooze as well. So it's kind of like you wrap that up and you manage to kind of like wrap up one of his arms with it. And he's like, and he can't quite, yeah. doesn't manage to break it free basically. Can I jerk him back a little bit as well? Or like... uh, yeah, you can give me a strength check. Uh, 19. 19. This time he actually, like, you try and jerk him back and he just, like, <clears throat> doesn't move. It's just like, <clears throat> um, you're stronger than him, you reckon, but he's just got better leverage because you're flying, so he's just, like, using his body weight to kind of push, pull you down. Um, Is that all I can do? That's pretty Probably, much, yeah, yeah, the action and movement and bonus action. I'm going to count all of that as one, really. Um, Libram will cast... <sighs> She'll cast Magic Weapon on Testament's Greatsword. Because um, that's going to hit harder than her little blacksmith's hammer. Cool. So that's what she's going to do. Ken Buckland. Ooh, can I shout at her? Oh, you can me. shout. Like It's a free action to talk. So as long as it's not too like a full conversation, you can shout stuff. Mm. Who's the biggest I'm threat? I'm going to shout, drop the spell. Okay. On your turn, you can do that. Ken Buckland. Mm. Uh, who's the biggest threat? Who's the closest okay. to the gargoyle right now? Is it Reynard or Juto? Mm -hmm. Reynard, Juto are equal distance, um, and you can see that it's now looking up at Juto because it's wrapped up one of his arms, and it's probably thinking of her as the greater threat. Mm -hmm. Bonus action, Shield of Faith on Juto, so you get plus two AC. Okay. Plus two. Yeah. Thank you. You probably recognize that you've done that. Uh, you still check. Four you still invisible. Nobody's invisible now. Oh. It kind of like, it seems to like look up at Juto, sees this kind of shimmering shield, and then looks towards you. I'm gonna ready an action okay. for <coughs> if the spell is dropped and it plunges into the sludge, I'm going to polymorph it into a pot belly pig. Okay, so Aww. you already cast Shield of Faith, which is a bonus action, but you're ready your action to do that. Okay, sure. Great. Specifically a pot belly pig that's heavy and has so, tiny legs. That's your go. Sure. Um, and it is will. pregnant. It takes <laughs> <laughs> the only problem with this DM screen is... Oh my god! So like kick it off, kids! Yeah, did it damage oh. your phone? No, that's fine, actually. Cool! <laughs> did not the glass off, but I drank it all. So... Okay. Wow. Can you just move the guard wall closer towards Cam Buckland, please? Yeah, yeah, He's got yeah, enough slack to move that, so oh, he'll basically no. move like one step that way. <clears throat> um, and do yeah, I, seeing the... Huh? Uh, no, because it's not oh, yeah. moved out of your threat range. It's so only if it moves away from you completely, it stays within your threat range. What about you do? Um, you I'm too busy holding a rope, dude. Okay. Yeah, she doesn't even really have a weapon out. I'm there. trussing it up. Kick it in the back you could probably head. have a kick. I'd say you could make an unarmed yeah. strike as an attack kick opportunity. In the back of the head. Yeah. Kick it in the back of the head, mate. Uh, okay. Who punches a guy in the back of the head? Although technically it's oh. not. Yeah. Um, 18. Technically it's not. Well, yeah, go on then. Yeah, sure. Go yeah. on then. Hits. Go on. He's got enough health. Nine. Damage? Yep. Okay. Oh, sure. and key uh, points make my fists and um, feet magical. magical. Yeah, no, that's fine. I've, I marked it as full damage, I know that. Um, nice. Oh, I forgot that technically he would take a d4 of, of oh, acid damage, which heals him. What? Uh, takes what? Huh? <laughs> Was that acid, did you say? <laughs> so, uh, Cam Buckland, uh, it sees you cast this spell on Duto, and then it's kind of attention turns to you. It seems to size you up, and then it and three arms. Um, it's it's going to try and quickly just see if it can get its arms it's free. Can it. you make a strength check for me? me? So d20 plus strength. 12. 12. Its arm, it kind of pulls it free. Its wings are still gunged up, 
but it's now got its four armors free, and then it attacks Buckland with all th with all three four. of them. With three of them, because one of them it still was it had to pull free. Uh, actually, so, yeah, can Buckland twenty to hit? Yeah. Does a nineteen hit? Yeah. Does it? Well, that's two nineteens. Right. So let's do first attack here. So that's going to be 12, 17 points of bludgeoning damage. Second attack is only 11 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, ooh. good. Um, you're going to have to make concentration checks for... Um, Shoot a face. Yeah. So first one is going to be... That's a 19. Plus. That's going to pass. Yep. Second one, because it's each time you take damage. That's a 9. What do I add? Uh, plus constitution, I think. 10 then. 10. That's going to fail. So the Shield of Faith will go. Ooh. Um, yeah, and then with its third yeah. attack, it doesn't have its extra arm, so it's probably just going to hit you. So eight, 13 points of damage. So it just boom, 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 pummels, pummels you with these three hands. Is that all you got? Uh, and then it's just, it just seems to loom there. Um, at initiative level 20, so Reynard, you sink a foot down, but oh, yeah. it also sinks a foot down, like because okay. uh, it stepped off the platform into the sludge. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Reynard, your go. You are currently restrained by the sludge. Yeah, can I use these... No, these are knights, aren't they? Yeah, I guess they're, they're like on statues, plinths. yeah. So can I use the bottom of the plinth or statue or something to grasp onto? Yeah, two? sure. Yeah, so it's, uh, make a strength saving throw. No bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell me what you got? I got a ten. A ten? Even with the bonus of like trying to pull yourself up, you can't free yourself, you're still stuck in. Uh. Um, you're going to take... One point of acid damage. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Busy. I'm dying. Save some for the rest of us. Jeez. Shut up. So you are restrained. So in that case, I'm gonna. If you. So I guess that would have been my move. That's your. That's your action, actually, technically, to escape. Ah, shit. All right. Uh, Axel. Yep. Axel, you can still command Axel though. <laughs> Ten. Ten does not actually hit it this time. Like it kind of dodges out the way. <laughs> like bats away the scimitar with one hand. <laughs> Damn. Um, as it bats it away. Uh, Elora. Can I cast? So um, I don't know if I can do both of these things. I want to hold out my staff and pull Reynard out. Okay. That'd probably be an action. That'd be an action. Okay. And then I'll cast as a bonus action healing word on Cam then. Okay. Sure. So um, uh, you hold out the staff. You can make a strength check for Reynard or you can give him advantage. I'll do it. I'll yep. Makes sense. Grab! <laughs> no, I'll use luck. No! <laughs> Four out of five. Like Plus, 11. Even with six, it's still not enough. Not. So she's trying to, you're I trying to put, but you're also it. trying to focus on the spell and you just don't quite give Reynard your full attention. Um, so you can cast Hidden Word. What level are you casting it at? Second. Second, so 2d4 plus wisdom. That's going to be your go. Do you cancel the spell? Eleven. Yeah, do you cancel the nope. flooring? Nope. So Testament... Because she's still on it. Yep. So I can't... Yeah. Testament will move up and try and get in some blows with his now magic greatsword. Wee. Uh, he's going to hit with the first attack. What are you? And with dog misses runner? with the second attack. <laughs> Close enough. So war! Oh, 12, 12 plus 14 damage. Hits for complete amount as well. So he runs up and with one great cleaving strike he like tears a chunk out of the creature's leg nice. and it's like <laughs> pulls back and he's just like ah but in the second blow he just kind of gets uh, buffeted away um and you can see the gargoyle looks back and seems to kind of recognize him as a potential threat due to oh, hello. Oh, entire combat looking from person to person it's, you're like, worst. Ah, it's almost like ah, well no it's analyzing like every time one of you does something it like whoop, and it's judging who it Detective needs to attack. Mode. Oh, and it's right on. It seems very analytical in terms of like who it attacks and stuff. Oh, no. You're not so I'm still roping him up. I want. <laughs> yeah, you're holding the rope at the moment. You can see that his wings are basically useless. As long as you're holding the rope, his wings are useless. Once you hold the rope, you can't use a guandao, but you can still unarm strike. So you can still attack, you just can't use your guandao. Um, so I'm, can I, can I try and drag him back, but also unarmed kick him? So if you want to try and put him, he's also now sinking into the sludge. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's right. like you'd be pulling him out to try and drag him away, but you can just kick him. Okay. <laughs> so you can just and kick him is in that, the face. So uh, you of, would technically have advantage because he's considered yeah. grappled. Yeah. So can I kick, kick? Kick? Kick. Kick? 
Can I if flurry? you flurry, you can basically yeah. make four attacks, yes. But they would all have to be on on strikes. You don't have you don't have one down. That's the only difference. Yeah, but I have a decent. Come on, a, a one of them six. has to be a yep. net twenty. Okay. Yeah. First attack. Uh, twenty-eight hits. That'll, that'll do it. So, um. Nice. Uh, seven. Seven points. Come on. That's, That's mega cocked. cocked. That's cocked. Sure. I'll trust, uh, I'll trust you. Definitely was. I trust you. Twenty-three hits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's better. Ele- uh, no, twelve damage. Twelve damage. It's dead now, right? No. No. She's. You can see Juto is like literally like blowing, like hitting chunks off of this creature's stony form. Twenty-three hits. Come on. Uh, eleven. Come on. And last one. Yep. No, no, from 20. 22. Hit. Oh, hits. Still hit all four times. Uh, That's better. Yeah. A seven plus um, far, a six. 13. So, yeah, yeah, 14. So. Nice, all four hit. Yeah. So you watch as Juto holding the rope, sort of like wraps the rope around one hand, almost like yanks it to pull herself closer to it, like flying kicks it in the face, huge chunks of cho- stone jaw go flying off, one hand comes pummeling down, breaks off parts of its like horned head, and then with a kick she kind of shatters like part of its uh, its elbow off, like completely breaking apart in the stone. And you can see that it is crumbling and falling apart, but it's also still active and it doesn't seem to register the pain, but it does snap up at Juto and seems as furious as a stony form can be. Yeah. Analyze. New threat. New threat detected. Cam Buckland. I'm going to. Is it my turn already? Yep. What about Testament and Libra? Uh, well, Testament's already goed. He attacked it. He t- attacked it with a great sword. Libra goes going. at the same time as you and she's just going to drag Testament back. I'm going to try and help she's try and defend out. him from my side this time. Okay. Sweet. Um, so do you want to make the strength check for him or do you want to give him advantage? Brazier? It's like a statue of like a man <clears throat> with a sword, like a stone statue. Is there a is platform? Is it animated? With which I can hold its leg just, and you then can hold it, reach you can, out and Yeah, you can hold a leg basically. <laughs> to like yeah. stay on. Yeah. So do you want to give him advantage or do you want to make a check? He's I'll strong. give him advantage. Okay, so you're just going to basically all there, you're like, Reynard, come on! Um, yeah. You hold it that. Libram literally runs up um, and basically helps him disengage. She basically puts herself in front, holds up the shield, and then like pushes him back. And you can see that the two of them seem to have some sort of teamwork tactic, which Ooh. allows them to kind of use their actions for each other. I'm also gonna... Um, I'm just like, <sighs> just as him back. Oh, I like that. So, so what's your strength? Yeah. The gargoyle. <clears throat> okay, cool. The gargoyle. First of all, you can you see as the sludge-like chemical burns away at it, the stone repairs itself yeah. ever so slightly. Like it's like three, don't worry too much. Um, it's just like burning away. Um, it, it shows no sign of trying to pull itself free. Instead, all four arms turn on Juto um, after she just pummeled it. You hit him, he can hit you. Like, if you're within range to strike him. Is he able to turn around? Yeah. It's only his wings that are gunked up. His legs, like, he can. Also, his like arms are so long that he can just like reach back and stuff like that. Um, so, Juto. He's got a reach. 26 to hit? No. I'm guessing an 11 doesn't actually hit. Nope. A 20? No, yeah. Um, what about a 14? Nope. Okay, so just two hits. Okay. Um, good, 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 good. So that's gonna be, so you take 15 points of bludgeoning damage from the first blow. And then that's gonna be 16. 21 points from the second Ooh, blow. That was a sore one. Um, can you make two concentration checks, please? Me? Yeah, for your fly spell. Um, Does that, is that concentration if it's... Beyond? Even from a magic item, uh, technically uh, it is. So the first one's like really low. Oh, uh, what's it? Co- uh, so you just add your con modifier. Oh, that's the one with a zero. I think it's zero. Mm. Natural one. The, as soon as the first hit goes, you're kind of like focusing on this rhythm that the loop plays to keep the spell going and you're trying to keep the rhythm going in your head and then as soon as it just punches you in your face, your reflexes go to defend yourself and the rhythm's gone and you fall out the sky basically. But, the but you are on the platform and we slow fall means you take goal. no damage. Da, 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 da. To try and remind you of it. <laughs> Once it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, whilst the lore is concentrating on these stone platforms, you just kind of land, superhero pose, look up and it's there ready. Uh, Reynard, you'll go. Um, um, you okay. sink another inch, technically, at the top of the round. 
Right. Um, and then it's your go. Got a staff. Do I take damage now? So two side. foot. Um, yeah, I'll roll damage now. So five points Wait, of so acid. You're pulling me one way. Cam's pulling me well, other. Well, we're both offering to stabilize and get out. You bet you still you're have advantage. Me apart. So you take five points of acid. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then on your turn, you can try and escape. But you're now two foot into this sludge. Um, so you're what was it you said? You're like six two. So yeah, it's like up to your sort of like knees, Got just advantage. above your thighs. Good. Uh, hey. Uh, 19. 19. That's enough. Like, you're like, you go for Elora's help. <laughs> and Elora's just like, good! And just like pulls you out and you kind of pull yourself up along I, her arms. I um, pretend to. Raynard basically him. pulls himself up next to you. You kind of grab him and like throw him behind you, kind of thing. Get I, up, no, wait. Get you, you weren't helping. You were just doing a strength check. To me. I think Cam was the only one helping. No, oh. I was giving you my staff to hold Oh, no, but you made the that. strength check for him. No, that's right. So technically you do it, but for Cam. Yeah. Because you tried to pull him free yourself, but you were concentrating on the but spell. But I still held the staff out. You did, but him. in this case, it's Cam's help that helped him oh, okay. get him out. It's the advantage He's out. that so gave you him. Can, so Cam you got me out. So you basically you fall onto Cam as you basically okay. pull him Aww. up and free like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no! You still have your movement. Uh... Go oh, kill him! His range, though. But he has disadvantage when he attacks me. Does he? Why? He does, because he's a ranger. Oh, a ranger. oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Okay. Are, you still, are you still in his range, then? Kind of are. Probably. Yeah. What's yeah. his reach? It's long enough. 13? But he's still in his range, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Mm, technically, I think it's when you leave five foot around him, basically. Mm. But okay. I mean, I, it was a 13 to hit you, I'm guessing that still misses. It misses. Yeah, so. Is it all four of his arms? No, no, he no, only he gets, gets one, one attack. One. Okay. Yeah, he only gets one attack. Uh, so I've done my actions, I've done my movement, and Axel. Okay. And Axel, oh. 18. 18 hits, yeah. Axel cleaves in. Reynard, give my dice back. Yes, so Tom, also you're very cool. <laughs> Damage, oh, please, so nice. Axel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would you, would you like to roll damage now? Yeah, 10 please. 10, nice. 10 please. <laughs> so that one, again, it cleaves in and you can see that like now part of its arm has been cleaved completely off and it is Whoa. starting to stumble a little bit and it's kind of lurching around, its wings have been buried, it's being sucked down, it's like only eight foot of it still above the, the sludge. So that's how damaged it looks. That's how damaged it looks. That's how damaged it looks. Uh, Elora. I would like to shoot him in the face with my bow. Yeah, with a moon bow? Yeah. Okay. So you pull out the moonbow, you're no longer reaching out, you put the staff, like drop the staff or whatever, pull out the moonbow. 18? 18 hits, the blazing bolt of energy strikes true. Nice. 14 radiant damage. Okay, <laughs> so damage. that blow strikes it in the chest and huge chunks of stone just get blown out of the outside, leaving this kind of gaping cavity yeah. as it's like stumbles back. I've seen you hit anything. Its before. head is yeah. like scanning I'm over really all impressed. of you, desperately <laughs> trying to find which one to target first. Um, <laughs> I'm no threat. Testament <laughs> knows he's too far away. He's thrown both of his hand axes, which have probably sunk into the sludge at this point. Oh. Um, so he's just he just stands Meditate. back and he just takes a defensive stance, uh, which means it comes down to Juto. So is he sunk enough that his wings are in the sludge? His wings are, no. He's like two foot and he's like ten feet tall. Are like, his wings still roped? His wings are still roped, oh. though. Kick him in! Then I will start kicking and... <laughs> so you just pull yourself in back again. You kind of snap the rope taut and then... Whoosh, flying Yee. fist. Uh, using the rope to get more... Natural, Natural 20! 20. Natural 20. Natural 20. Natural 20. So roll your we'll dice, double it. So two dice or... No, no? Just roll it once and then double it. <laughs> Four. Yeah. Plus six. Uh, plus six. It's ten. Mm. So, yeah. Juto, don't roll second attacks. You kind of grab the rope, you, you fall yourself, and you kind of, this time you're on the ground, you kind of kick up, and just with one solid punch, the, the fist comes in, hits the creature sort of on the thing, and you just see the neck begin to crack and split as the head, you kind of push the last final force through it, the head just gets blown off, shatters against the back wall, turns to stone, and the body just crumples into the sludge where it slowly gets pulled and sunk under. Nice! Um, and then do these two just see me on the other side of this corpse? Just yeah, like, well you kind of like hit dust. off of its body and land next to them. I imagine the head kind of like smashes the wall behind me. Or... <laughs> and then Juto kind of like lands right in front of you basically. Super cool. Do you say that? <laughs> <laughs> that instantly. Just undoes it. 
Shut up. Um. <laughs> I'm just gonna start crying. Cam! Why are you crying? <laughs> What happened? Why does Stone what, take what, what, what? That was the second what time happened? you have been the most useless person in the universe. Do you remember my arm? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Pulling you out of the sludge like that a second ago was great. What about when Le uh, the Testament was in the uh, sludge? Did you not cause the whole issue in the first place of you falling into sludge? No. Walking into sludge! I've forgotten actually. I go over to Alora. And give her a hug. That's weird. Juto doesn't usually do that. And Laura's really happy about it though, so she hugs you back. I've just, I think it's just because I've been down in the dark with these two assholes. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh god! <laughs> <laughs> Save me! You put another little flower in your hair. Yeah. Um, um, what, what, it what is, happened? It's what happen good to see that you are well. It yeah, would. what? You're not? What happened? Why did you disappear? We killed well, a rat. I didn't really have a choice, I kind of fell. What? I, I fell into what, like fell some the earth? and things. Yeah. We tried to find you, but yeah. I guess you passed without a trace, and no. we couldn't find your trail. At no. I burrowed, oh. and then I kind of fell. So, anyway. We really need to learn more about how these elementals work. I found some information, though. What have you? What have you guys found? What? Rats. Uh, gargoyles. <clears throat> that was the master's creation. Just yes. before we get into this, is perhaps this the best place to have such a conversation? And like, Librem and Testament are pushed up against the wall amongst all this sludge. Also, if anybody does have any additional healing, perhaps it would um, be appreciated. Can they not nip over? Because there's. Well, they can, but she the just kind of gestures to the whole room. The platform's still there. Okay. So I'll move along so that they can actually they can move around. They can move around. Okay. Because I'm, I've kept the spell up. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna damage. go over as well. Kill that guy. <laughs> 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 where are we? Where are we going? I'm where spent. Is this going? Away. I can give you a potion. She Libram is like I have a little bit of healing left, not much, but we're gonna have to rest after this. This is yeah. This has wiped us all out. Yeah. Um, I will uh, heal. Uh, I will do. Uh, I don't know, I've got first level so cure wounds. Enjoy that? No, uh, no, yeah. no. I mean, I've I've healed him with what magic I with with which power? My key. I've healed. Is he healed? As much as, no, he's still like huge, oh. like gashing wounds. Like his jaw is like the magic that she's used has kind of set his jaw so he can speak, but he has these horrible like gashes up all of most of his face, um, kind of like splitting his lip a little bit. That's gonna he leave him up. Eight more hit points. Oh. Okay, eight more. Thank you. Eight more. He's just like. Thank you. The scars go down like a centimeter. Yeah, the scars <laughs> like they kind of knit, but there's still like a really bad scar. It's you suspect that such a wound, he's probably not going to heal from it anytime <clears throat> yeah. soon. Um, hmm. Where are we? Where does this path take us? I, uh, well, well, Reynard was tracking us we... towards. I believe Reynard was leading us to the center of the town. <laughs> Do we have to rest Spits before we blood. go? Yes. Everyone's really hurt, and if this is leading us to the tower, I know what's at the tower. Where, where was the place you you came out of those doors? That's Where does that go? Just Anywhere catacombs. safe though? No. Is the ghost still there? there? Does it smell? Uh, he think... left uh, Laura further back. She made up a way up a <clears> corridor. <throat> does it smell? Uh, did the catacombs smell? They weren't as bad as here. This is no. repugnant. In fact, actually, this is probably should have done at the beginning of combat. Just make a constitution save for me. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's yeah. I mean, it is hot. It's hideous. Like it stinks. It's putrid. But you're kind of like, oh, you're dealing with it. Reynard does not look well. He looks okay. physically oh. sick and green. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Is there air in there? We should get away from. <laughs> what is air anymore? <laughs> Did I get the sense that there were safer places back where I came from that we could rest? The safest place you reckon was probably the family tomb. Like yeah. it was actually the most secure. Like there was only one entrance in or out. And there was, it wasn't the disturbed other than the. Didn't how far to be. back from it was? Huh? I don't know how far away it was. Uh, yeah, it, took, it didn't take you that long. No, because like I got minutes. to you guys pretty quick. Um, we go there we and could, rest? Yes, I need to tell you what's in the tower and how we can deal with it before. How did you find that out by burrowing? <laughs> well, that's oh, a long story. I. Can I tell you on the way? I guess. Yeah. I just don't think it's very safe if gargoyles are patrolling this and you said you saw rats. We know what the wolves are doing, so... So, Elora and Cam Buckland. What? You see where the gargoyle had fallen into the sludge and sunk down. One of its arms, yeah. fully repaired, 
Can I shoot yeah. it? You shoot the hand, yeah, you can make an attack roll. Uh, okay, we go now. It's going to regenerate, isn't it? Because it's fallen in acid. That oh. it. 17. 17, that you hit the hand, roll damage. Uh. Nine. Nine points. You can see like fingers get blasted off, but then a second clawed hand like... We need to go. We need to go uh. immediately. Or okay. should we not pull it out and kill it on land? Wherever it falls, it's going to fall into the sludge. We need to heal, chase it at least into the catacomb so that... It doesn't go back into the sludge. Was there but any you sludge do in realize the we probably cannot rest the fingers. in catacombs. Mm. Begin rebuilding. We need to rest back there. We can't go anywhere else. So we need to end this. So you yeah. can see it's pulling itself free, but it's not quite free yet. It's head, it now like... We're a thing a new head. Uh, what let's you lead it do? into the corridor. Well, I'm gonna... yeah, we have to kill it in, in somewhere there's no sludge. Yeah, let's lead it into the corridors and kill it in the corridors. Agreed. Get the door open. Okay, door so you're just going to run down into the catacombs? Yeah. Okay, great. <coughs> you head down into the catacombs. The stairs, you start pulling your way down. Do you shut the door behind you? What are you doing? I'm going to watch the gargoyle. Okay. I can From see the... where we've gone. We need to kill it before. I don't think we should point. shut the doors because no, then it might no go elsewhere. Because if it goes in reports where we are. It seems to be struggling. Like So it, it, it seems that in one big burst of strength, it managed to pull itself almost to the surface. Mm. But then before it could get quite free, like the sludge is sucking it back down again. It's repairing it, the, the chemicals or whatever that it's icker it is seems to be kind of like regenerating the stone, but then it will get sunk down again, and then it has to pull itself back up, and then it sinks down a little bit more, and it's... Can we you might this... be able to evade it, possibly, you're not sure. Can we make this worse for it? Can we, like, bury it deep? You look or up, there is it? the there is a stone ceiling, like, where you can see, like, the, the stone is caved in and stuff like that. Can we collapse, collapse it down? more? Is there any particularly, like, weak, loose rocks above us, or anything like that? Give me a perception check. Um, you yeah. Man, you're getting lucky with this thing. Some strength checks to strength mm. it's, it's like it pulls itself free and then it starts like blum, 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 blum. I'm here! Blum, 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 blum. Uh, 17. 17. I would say that, yeah, looking up, you can see that basically it's like a stone lattice work, like these arches. Um, and yeah, there's definitely some weak points in those that you could probably strike at. Okay. So everyone's clear, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. If you pull everybody in, yeah, like yeah, we went pull everybody into the cactus. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, he is still. Here. Yeah, I he's basically like some... where he fell, so like there, yeah. just like. I want to shoot my thunderbolt at the weak point of the ceiling. Okay, just roll damage for me with the thunder damage. Just roll damage. Uh, 1d8. 1d8. Um, before you do that, uh, Libram will cast. Magic weapon, her last spell that she can cast uh, on the the bolt to make it just hit with more force. Oh, does it not matter that my crossbow is already? Well, it is actually what my crossbow is no, already magic. It, it so. gives it a boost. It's it's not going to do much. It's just going to help like do choose. the thing. I know. Uh, seven. Helps. Thirteen. Thirteen points of damage. So the bolt, and you hear this thunderous kind of. And you can see it beginning to crack, like the stone above, like heavily cracks, but it doesn't quite collapse in yet. Does anybody else have anything can they I want to try? Shoot it as well? Uh, can can I just shoot it? What are you going to do? Throw well? Nimbus? Sorry. You can throw Nimbus, but yeah. it's going to be disadvantaged because well. of the sight. Yeah, you can make the second shot, although That's it doesn't have the thunder 15? damage. It's more the radiant damage from this one. Oh, 15 radiant? hit? No, you don't need to oh, roll oh, hit, just okay. roll the, the damage. Oh, Mainly it's the radiant damage. 11. 11? Do I roll damage, do I? Yeah, but for you it's mainly. Right, it's going to be halved. Don't roll poison damage. But it's forced, isn't it? <coughs> Do you have forced? No, yeah. no you don't. Four points of damage. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> with the 11, so Elora <laughs> fires up. The radiant energy kind of like <laughs> kind of cracks and you can see more of the stone crack. It begins like dusting and raining down. Um, you throw Nimbus like bing, <laughs> and then <laughs> uh, transfers back down. I did another 11 piercing, I suppose. Testament will. Okay. What'd you do? Another <laughs> like, 11. 11, yeah. Okay. That was just so, with that one, it, it seems to be near its point of breaking. Um, Testament basically grabs the. I think he picked up a. Um, chair grabbed, leg. <laughs> not the chair leg. He had two hand axes. He had a short sword, the great sword. Oh, he had a spear as well. Oh. And he basically <laughs> throws the spear up. Um, with the last bolt that kind of beds in, it does just enough for the, the ceiling to begin crumbling and collapsing. Cool. The stone clatters down and you, you see what is like night sky and you can hear undead and the dirge singer's song <laughs> begin to fall down. 
but you also, the stone completely engulfs the area around the gargoyle just as it pulls itself free again. <laughs> However, it doesn't seem to stop and the whole, whatever street you were on begins collapsing in. Oh. You throw yourselves into the corridor <laughs> as <doors>. tons of <laughs> stone lands outside and that door does not open again. Oh. Uh, with my natural uh, explorer, mm -hmm. was uh, how close are we to the central area? Uh, you're maybe street? like 40 minutes away. Oh, so it's not a street in the central area, it's a street. No. Outside, 40 minutes away. You are not sure. Probably might be within the interior walls, yeah, inner walls, yeah. Would I not know that? I mean, you don't know the city. <laughs> the problem is you've never been to this city. Like, yes, no, you're good at not getting lost, but you don't know the layout of the city very well. Yeah, okay. But you would estimate that, like, judging by how long you travelled, you're maybe about 40 minutes away. That could fall within the within the inner walls, depending on which part of the city you're in. Mm, okay. Did we see anything fall in with it? Undead bodies. Okay. You see some of like the townsfolk that had been brought back to life by the dirge singer's song probably would fall in with it as well. So did it did it still look like uh, nighttime outside? Yes. Yeah, okay. Pitch black. Cool. I'm just gonna turn cool. around from like the billowing smoke coming cool, from cool, the door. Cool, cool, cool. The dust settling. And then, well <laughs> Can we move <laughs> I'm gonna start moving us along really quickly. To yeah, I hope there's the another way out. I've been yeah. Back to yeah. the tomb. Okay. Basically. I guess no one's gonna chase us from this doorway. Uh, oh, there's absolutely no way out. We need to move quickly. If okay. we want to rest, we need to get to the Where are you going to take a rest? Place. Well, I wanted to take them back to the tomb. Okay, initially. so you head back to the tomb? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so then, is, then basically see if the ghost is back in the tomb. Dalstan is back in the tomb. He looks up, he's like, I thought you had left. What the hell oh, is yeah, that? Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. I imagine I told them on the way back. Okay. I want it to come <laughs> on the way back. So, yeah. I mean, All it, of the stuff. That's the ghost that, you told us it about. It takes you about half an hour to make your way back to the tomb. What do you tell her? You can do conversation now. There was, um, there was a gargoyle and uh, it, it kept healing itself in oh. some sludge. No. So Sorry, I meant to explain us. to these no, guys I'm, what you learned. Uh, oh! Because like, you have like 30 minutes where you're just travelling down corridors oh, okay. and stuff like that. Um, we need to take out the dirge singer first. Yeah. Every night that it sings, the barrier that of its power it spreads. So every night, the power grows. So it's the dirge singer that's causing all the, the power. Karen's Karen Karen's resting place is underneath the dirge singer in the top of the tower, and Cam I. What? He has. He has Morella's body there, preserved. What do you mean preserved? He wants to bring her back and then turn her into a vampire. What? Oh, that's messed up. What? Why would they do that? And he wants... He doesn't want to just kill you. He wants to make you suffer for eternity. Don't oh, we all? I understand. I see he hasn't changed one iota. Um... No, but... There are, sur there are some surviving Bucklands. They are at the manor. As in zombies? No, there are some living as slaves. As slaves? Yes, but this ghost told me not to go there because that's where the vampire spawn are. So if we go there, we're only going to be confronted by more enemies. We need to take out the dirge singer and Karen. That may also. rid the place of the vampires. I mean, what you, would, what you would understand is that if the master vampire is killed, the vampire spawn just die, basically. That. Yeah. We you, need you've to take, seen. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and they don't really have that uh, much power on their own. Karen also has his father's ancestral blade. It makes him fast. Oh, of course he does. Yeah, great. Aww. He's an expert swordsman. He was all right. The vampires alone well, were fast enough. He's also got additional magic power because of Strad. Because of a deal oh, good. he's made. Oh, this, good. The dirge singer is a fallen angel, right? But can be killed. Yeah. So. Anything okay. Anything else? Is there anything we can use against? <laughs> he, the sunlight. Sunlight is is bad. Running water. Running water. Karen is weak to running water. You, the ghost, I think, I'm not sure if I made this entirely clear, the ghost did say that the, the, the lack of proper sunlight 
is caused by the dirge singer. Yeah. Like she is the one that basically I makes it darker than it that. will is need to be. We kill the so dirge singer. Kill that, and it will be easier bring the to sunlight, kill Karen. And we draw him out into the sun to face him. Why did he take Morella's body? That's messed up. Because he is her ultimate. He, he that she's his ultimate prize. That's the I thing he remember. wants in the whole world is Morella. Why don't I remember what happened? She. He did tell me that. What? The go so, you talked to bad guy's daddy, and you believed him. He wants Karen. What to did you be tell killed. him? He wants Karen to be killed just as much as we do. What if he's a spy? He what can... if he's a ghostly spy? What if he's relaying all this information to his son? He can't rest until Ke Ke Karen dies. He's he can't. What if he's part of this scheme? What if he's the one that's sending all the rats? I don't believe that he is. We, we could die here. We could die in this tomb. This could be where Karen wants us. Well, I don't think we should stay in this tomb. I just... I, don't I think, think that it might be wise to get some knowledge about where we are from him and then go from there. I don't think Karen would be happy with you dying in a tomb underground. No, he wouldn't settle for that. He'd want to catch me, at least. And this is a great place to catch me. What other options do we have? The way is blocked. That's why we need the knowledge that this guy has about the area so that we can find somewhere. Everybody so, needs to rest. That's what we need to find. We can't rest there. Okay, so what, yeah, do you not want to rest in the tomb? We want to go to there and... Yeah, there was other, like, there were like little yeah. splinter-off corridors with smaller tombs. They weren't, like, lavish, but you could easily use one of those to rest in. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go near that ghost. If he's got anything... If he led me to you. Yeah, but I don't know what he's up to. He knows the area. Why would he tell Alora so much? Maybe because he knows he has the upper hand, maybe leading into false pretense that we have a chance, that leading us to the dirge singer I'll is... be honest, listening to everything Alora has said, I do not feel as optimistic as you. What do you mean? He's a undead vampire with powers from this... Powerful god Strahd. I literally... He is an expert swordsman armed with a magical weapon that gives him speed. Yeah. He has various powers. He turns. Uh, I, she didn't say that. <laughs> um, uh, he has this dirge singer whose power is spreading more and more every day yeah. and can raise the undead. Where, to where's the world. your hair optimism in what I just said? <laughs> I am just saying, why, why, why would he f make us feel that we had a chance of hope when all I've heard so far is how utterly he, powerful they are? My point was, he was giving us purpose and driving us somewhere so that Karen could face us. Were we not doing that already? Lured us into a trap. Were we not doing that already? Cam, this whole city is a giant trap. We were going for Karen anyway. Why would he tell us weaknesses? We don't know if they're weaknesses. Would we? Would I have heard anything? Well, like, you know that sunlight general, hurts vampires. Yeah, like you've about seen vampires. that and stuff like that. Would we know that. any inkling about running water? Reynard heard that running water hurts them, like, but he also heard that garlic does stuff and that didn't work. But like, yeah, running water stakes. Or stakes and sunlight, you know, work. You've seen that. Staking an incapacitated vampire destroys it. Um, sunlight makes them burn. Obviously, the sunlight's lessened here in Grey Bell, but you know that it is a, a, a way of destroying them. The only thing you are unsure of is running water. That's the only thing that the ghost told you that you didn't know before, really. But there's definitely stories you would have heard. Why would he have told us that the dirge singer isn't responsible for the lack of sunlight here? He told us that every day the power grows. He also told me that within the Bucklands that are still living... There's an elderly woman who he would like to run Greybell when Karen is, is gone. Uh, mm. So the old woman, the main old woman that you can think of from the family, um, you had the old, the old fellow that kind of looked after things. He had a sister called Eldie who was basically like kind of not quite fortune teller, but she kind of like looked after everybody. She was a bit matronly. She kind of like helped look after the family and clean stuff and things like that. Um, if there is, if he's referring to an older Buckland woman, it's most likely Eldie. She said that she's taking care of the remaining Bucklands yeah. who are alive, and that he would want her to rule Greybell. 
So DM Mark has a question. What are you doing right the second? So uh, you've led them down into the corridor. You know at one end of the corridor is the tomb with the ghost with Dalstan. The other side you didn't really explore. You walk down a little bit of it, but it does extend further. It goes further behind you. What would you like to do? Are you taking a short rest? Are you taking a long rest? I would like to sleep on this. Take them to the tomb. With Dalstan. Yeah. Okay. Carefully, yeah. Okay. I want to keep an eye. Um, if the tomb door is closed, I want to. I uh, know it's still open from where you let, opened it. Can I see the light of the ghost? Mm -hmm. You can see him pacing can around. Can I hear anybody else? No. Nobody else? No. Okay. Okay, so you lead them down. Um, you see a ghostly figure, royal clothing. Um, he kind of looks and he's like, Elora of Galanadel, why have you returned? Who are these? And then he looks at Cam. I know you. Yeah. You've seen this figure in paintings at the Black Hearth Manor. Um, you've probably seen statues of him in the town as well. This is Karen's father, Dalstan Black Hearth. You are the Buckland boy. Yeah. The one that Morella gave herself to save. Mm. The one that Karen, the one that drove Karen mad. Me? No, the action of Morella saving your life. When Karen plunged the, plunged the blade into her chest instead of yours, it broke him. It drove all the black rage, all the greed and lust that he had built inside of himself for so long. It poured out. He begged those powers. He begged this Strahd to give him this gift, he calls it. How do you know what happened? He is my son. Were do you, you alive think? at the time? No, but I've been watching him from down here. Everything that happens in Grain Bell, I know. This is my penance for raising him to be the way he is, for creating the monster that lurked inside his heart. Mm. It's a shame you couldn't do anything while you were living Indeed. to steer him from this. I agree. How can I trust you? That you're not just a ploy of your son, I sent have... here to lure us to the dirge singer so that they can kill us? He kind of smirks. My son thinks that I am dead, long dead. And he had no love for me when I was alive. He loved only my title and my power. Once I fell sick, he could have sent for healers. He could have paid gold to have me healed by clerics or mages. But instead he mourned <coughs> what a sad tragedy it was to lose a man so great as I. He wanted my position. He wanted me to fall ill. I have no desire to help my son, but if you ask me if I still love him, of course. He is my son. He's not your son. Perhaps not anymore, but he was. That is why I wish to see his body, this creature he has become, destroyed, so that Greybell at least can know peace. If you have been sent here, if you have come to finish some task, I beg you to do so. Uh, yes, we're going to do it with or without your help. That's what we're here to do. That's what Avandra has sent me to do. It's going to be tough, but Greybell deserves better. As you say that, those of you who are watching this take place, hear a rustling of wind and a mist <whistles> flies in from the tomb. Going to get ready. You begin to ready yourself as the mist coalesces into a man with black hair, a handsome man, with a strong face, a blade at his hilt, a fine long sword made from a mithril, carved with the symbol of Greybell itself into its pommel, appears. His eyes are pure red, and then he looks at you, and then he sees Cam. And that's where we're going to end today. Oh, you son of a bitch. Because we got to read donations. Oh, son of a bitch. Boop, 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 boop. Miss form <laughs> can travel through small gaps. Is that what that was for? Boop, 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 son boop, of boop, a boop, bitch. Boop, 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 boop. I had an idea as well for how to deal with that, but I wasn't watching. So if we have to fight him now, we are going to TPK. <laughs> We're going to die. He might just be here to like chat. 
Well, you at home can speculate what happens while we read donations. Get ready for next week. Uh, We're going to read some donations. Yeah, if we could bring that across sound, that'd be super duper. There was, there was a lot of unfortunateness that happened. Oh, shit. Such as knocking, the, knocking the, the semi clay golem into fucking ass. You knew we should have just fought it. Go, Mark, go, before so, we talk about it. Yes, anymore. Honky Conky resubscribed. Thank you very much. 12 months in a row, Scottish voice. Let's go! Night and Char donated. Thank you very much with a heart message. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, Defrepper resubscribed for 22 uh, months in a row. In Lost Twin 666 resubscribed for 21 yeah, months in a row. So, Thank you very much. Yeah, can we just remove, remove the, the, Just have donations. donations. Yeah, if you don't mind. Otherwise, Sorry, resubs. But we just don't have time to read through them all. But we do appreciate it. Well, Yorks appreciates it. We don't. <laughs> uh, Rex Tan donated. I've watched every VOD twice now, but this will be my first High Rollers live I've ever caught live. Lots of love from America, and thank you so much for introducing me to D&D. &D. I now DM a campaign of my own and play as a Tempest cleric in another. Nice. Awesome That's 138 stuff. VODs. That's wow. a lot of VODs. Lot. Frank the NPC donated. Hey, can't wait for today. Vampire Laura drinking Cam's blood. Juto finally admitting her secret feelings for message redacted. And Rainy fulfilling mm. his dream and becoming... An elephant hunter, Tusk Boy. Thank you very much, Frank. <laughs> Tusk Boy. Tusk Boy. Uh, Senpai Free donated. Been over a year since I started watching the VODs on Yogg's Live. Finally seeing a live show. Big thanks to you for guys and get for guys getting me in, and my friends into D&D. It's become a very big part of our lives. Love you all. Thank yeah. you very much. Nice. And then Ola Renve donated uh, with no message. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. You. Frank the NPC donated saying Cam's backstory hype. Even uh, if my other wishes do not come true, this is a truly great episode. GG, Mark. Nice. GG. Uh, Damn the Lamb donated. Uh, don't get to watch live very often. This is a nice treat. It's great so far. Please keep up the good work on my favorite ever series. Wow. Thank you very much. The Curly Girl, here comes some crisps. Sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> Love you all a lot, especially Kim. And Katie, your Instagram is goals. Yeah, also, my really... group and I started playing 5th edition D&D as well as Starfinder RPG, uh, of which I'd love to see a one shot of on Tabletop Weekly. Yeah. It's great fun, much love as always. That channel again is Tabletop Weekly. What is yeah. that channel? Stop talking, it's Chris Wigan. Ralui? I'm taking my microphone off so you don't hear me eating crisps. Okay. Okay. Well, I hear it. Ralu, Ralu Lai? Just personally. Just purchased a second set of dice and felt the need yeah. to round up the sum. Thank you very much. I can't begin to tell you how much I love what you do. The amount of work and dedication you put into every week, mostly in, is yeah. amazing. Have a great year and many exciting adventures. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. And obviously Sam, behind the scenes yeah. as well. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I'll read one more. David Dees donated through, thought Testament was going to die and then it all goes to literal shit when Alora isn't there. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Thank you very much. He's fine. Um, it's gone a little uh, shit now. I share with Sky Spear donated. So managed to catch you guys live finally and wanted to drop a donation. As always, I love the stream and appreciate the humor and excitement. High Rollers is a highlight of my week. Thank you very much. Uh, Varus donated. I wish I could donate more for the amazing work you do, but since I'm an apprentice doing my first year, I don't get paid that much yet. But it's better than nothing. Love all the stuff you do and keep up the good work. Do not worry. Everything Ken. helps. Thank you so much. You don't even have to donate, just spread word. No. Indeed. Uh, Sky Silverwing donated High Rollers. Just out of random curiosity, would a water elemental count as moving water for the purpose of a vampire's weakness of moving water? It's an interesting question, isn't it? Maybe we will Asking find Asking a friend, <laughs> on a side note, how long was Cam's rope? 60 foot of hemp and rope. 50 foot of hemp and rope. 50 foot of hemp and rope. That's, the, yeah. So it was long enough. Um, Ruttenslin. Rutt Donated. First time catching the stream live, so throwing in a cheeky donation. Love the stream, the story, and the characters are great. Good job on always making me laugh, even though I've currently lost my voice due to a cold, so today it's mostly wheezing. Oh no! Feel better soon. Tom Let Hazel. Uh, Sky Silverwing. Uh, can you bring that message up? Sam. 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 <laughs> He'll do it. Uh, <laughs> did you two ever turn the bag of holding inside out to find out what all the previous owners had in there? <laughs> Did no. you? Uh, I'd be curious to find out if there was anything in there that might be badly affected by the Everseed being in there. Oh God, don't turn it inside out. <laughs> what happens no. when you turn a bag of holding inside out? Well, you have to take it you, from. But you have to think about no. what you want to pull out of it, so would yeah, that even work? Yeah, so I don't know how you do that. I don't know. Hmm. Mark, anyway. don't you have to do that? Like, you have what? to think of what's in the bag to get mm -hmm. it out. If you turn so it inside out, know. what happens? Who knows? Everything ends. Okay. Um, thank you for that, Sky Silverwing. Kev Tim Winch. 
Uh, not been able to donate lately, yeah, but Tim. mostly due to missing the streams because feeling down. Oh, no. uh, but wanted to chip in today. Also, Katie, you made me want to watch Brave, which I've never considered watching before. I liked it, so thank you. You're welcome. You're you welcome. Um, and oh, Zafir won. Uh, hey, here's another token of my appreciation for another great episode. Here's to the rest of the campaign. As Alora now canonically said, let's do it! Let's do it! Unimaginably important, mind boggling paradigm shift. Look at that face. Cannon! It's yeah. cannon. Um, let's do it! <laughs> there it is! <laughs> Unimaginably important, mind boggling, paradigm shifting question of the week. Favourite colour? Red. Purple. Purple. Hey! I said first. Dark, he is dark purple, purple shirt guy. Yeah. Uh, and I'll leave it there. Black! Can you know. <laughs> Granite. <laughs> Kim, there you go. Oh, me. Hey. <laughs> um, the Nord's House has donated six, six, six. Um, first of all, the edgy dead reckoning dice love the number seven, so not sure if that's luck or not. Also, note to self, stay away from sewers and sludge. Yes. Noted. I quite like my quicksand sludge. I thought it was cool. It's pretty cool. Blackfire yeah. Rebel has donated. I can't me and my just Griffin donate. Um, I can't just donate to Mark's stream, can I? Wish I could tune in, but I run my own campaign at the same time as High Rollers every week. Thank gods for Yogg's Live! Uh, yeah. Just so you know, have you fun. can donate to Tabletop Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a donate button. <laughs> Thank so you, you know. to Metamanu for your donation. <laughs> there, you there you go, there you go. Oh, do you want me to do I... it, or do you want to do it? Um, I'll do it, one. it's been a while since I've done one. It's the last one. Awkward Dog Boner has donated! This week's boner rating, necrophilia out of 20. What? Karen's extreme munting quest for Mirella. Raging oh. hard on moment. The party <laughs> gets a thick slimy suck in the sewers. Cool. Election, election, erection rejection moment. That cliffhanger made my penis softer than Cam's masculinity. What? Hashtag bone on Sunday. Nice. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry. Back to you, Mark. It's almost like, do you know what? I watched um, Dice Cam Rex oh. and Chris Perkins and that. Oh. The store says that both sets of dice are sold, sold out, out now. now. You've all bought Holy all the crap. dice. You what? bought them all. Uh, you, guys. you did. I guess that was like 70. Check. What? Like, I can eat another day. <laughs> No, oh, um, well, there was, only, there was less than 70 Less left, than 70 so... available. Jeez. Well, we told you, it'd be dangerous to wait, so... Sorry. Sorry. When you hear us say, go get it now, that means go really do. Uh, do. But there is more to come on the merch store. Really yes. sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, keep an eye on our Twitter this week, and hopefully we'll be releasing... New stuff. Announcements. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, always lots of going on there. We'll be back next week to see how this wonderfully dramatic episode pans out. I ship Karen and Cam. Yeah? Nope. 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 Well, they <laughs> suck your blood. We. Not, not fucking his blood, he's not. He doesn't no want to way. turn me into that Yours? Thing. Yours? Uh, maybe his? Teethings don't have blood. Maybe mine. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>